Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the September 27th meeting of the Redevelopment Board to order. Uh, this open meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board is being conducted remotely consistent with the extension of the uh, Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. For this meeting, the ARB is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. So let me first confirm that all members of the Redevelopment Board are present and can hear me. Uh, we'll take a roll call, starting with Ken Lau. Here. Eugene Benson. Present. Melissa Tintakoulos. Melissa? Well, I see Melissa, she is here. <laughs> And uh, our newest member of the board, uh, Steve Revelak, welcome. Uh, thank you, uh, present and able to hear. Wonderful, and I am Rachel Zimberry, chair of the board. So we will start this evening by uh, opening with the continued public hearing, docket number 3665 for 645 Massachusetts Avenue. And Jenny, I believe that you have an update for us on this hearing. Yes. Um my office received an update from the applicant requesting a continuation by the board to October 25th, which is the second meeting in October. Okay, super. So um, we would just need to vote to continue that hearing. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a roll call vote. Um, do we hear a motion to continue public hearing um, docket number 3665 to the meeting on the evening of October 25th? So moved. Second. Uh, we'll take a roll call vote. Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Melissa? She's on mute. Melissa? Taking a roll call vote to continue the hearing for 3665. Can you hear us? Now I can. Thank you. Okay. Yep. So we're um, continuing docket number 3665 to um, October 25th. Just need a yes or a no for the motion. Um, yes. Okay. Thank you. And Steve Revelak? Yes. And I am a yes as well. So we will uh, see the applicant on October 25th. All right, uh, we will now open a new public hearing for docket number 3673 for 455 to 457 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, Jenny, do we have the applicant with us here this evening? We do, we have John Murphy, uh, who is the developer, and we have Cynthia Pesciuto, I believe. It says Cynthia P., um, who is the property owner. Great, thank um, you. So John or Cynthia or both of you, can you hear us? Okay. Yes, I can hear you, John. Great, hi, John. So um, um, this evening you'll have um, up to 15 minutes for a presentation followed by uh, questions. Uh, first, we'll go to actually um, the Director of uh, Planning for any comments, uh, followed by questions from the board and public comment before any deliberation. Uh, Rachel, uh, uh, Robert Anesti is here for the applicant as well. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, what we'll have this evening for the presentation will be John Murphy, the project manager. We're gonna have Pe uh, Peter Slovic, the uh, architect, uh, Aaron Markey, uh, the civil engineer, and Cynthia Pescudo. Uh, we are here uh, under application environmental design review, and we're seeking to convert that uh, uh, building or the buildings uh, on the corner of Mass Ave and Medford Street in Arlington 
Uh, people will be familiar with the block. It's the leader bank building out front, the, uh, the old pizza shop to the right of that, and down Medford Street, the various retail shops. We are proposing to uh, add a second floor to the one-story brick commercial building. And uh, we basically would consolidate, as the planning department has indicated, uh, the Medford Street portion of the property with the Mass Ave portion of the property. Uh, John Murphy is going to talk about how the development is going to work. However, uh, the board should know and the members of the public should know that the property will be subject to the historical commission. Not all of the property is subject to the historical commission, but the Medford Street portion is and that should kick in all of the property in terms of going before the historical commission. We're not gonna do that until we get beyond the ARB. Uh, we are proposing a mixed use building. Uh, and uh, as I've uh, indicated, a two-story mixed use structure, 13 residential units uh, uh, are, are being proposed. One studio, 12 one bedroom units, two affordable units, uh, and that would be 50% of the total units uh, that uh, are provided. And 10 of the 11 existing commercial spaces would remain, resulting in a total commercial area of 7,802 square feet. And parking was going to be provided on site with a parking garage, as well as parking outside. The parking garage will have 14 parking spaces. Now, Rachel, I know that you like to get right to the guts of proposals. I'm going to turn it over to John Murphy and have John Murphy talk about the proposal. And in turn, we'll bring in Peter and we'll bring in Aaron when their areas come up as well. I wanna point out that we spent a good deal of time reading Jenny's uh, report to the ARB. And we've tried to address issues raised by Jenny in that report. John will talk about some of those. If he doesn't talk about some of them, some of them I will later on. John, jump in. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. And thank you everyone for taking the time tonight. Again, my name is John Murphy with Summit Real Estate Strategies for the record and working with the Pasciuto family on this application. I won't repeat anything that Bob said, but um, just to give a little bit more of a summary, maybe Jenny, if we could just jump to the rendering that shows the corner uh, the leader bank, just to kind of describe a couple of things. This one, I mean, of course not in this angle, but is this the one that you're talking yes, about? That is, yes, that okay. is the one. So while she's doing that, I will just jump right into a couple of important things to note. Um, almost all of this development is existing foundation to remain. Therefore, nothing is being taken down. The entire first floor of this property, as you wrap around the corner all the way down to Park Terrace, uh, back through the uh, nail salon is, is already remaining. As everyone can notice, this there the side on Mass Ave is already two stories. So obviously our proposal is to extend that two stories to round this entire building off. So the one question I know is gonna come up is how the back of this building is working. So currently that Papa Gino space, which has been vacant for some time, it juts out into the rear of that parking lot. The existing space is 3,269 square feet. What we are proposing to do is keep the front 1,460 square feet of the frontage on Mass Ave, which we do have a tenant for that space already. And if we do ever, if we do get to the civil plans or other plans showing the, the floor plan, you can see that the existing Papageno space juts way back out into that parking lot. So what we are proposing to do is basically chop off the back part of that space, which it's, it's extremely deep. So now picture the rear of the building is all um, aligned. So there's no more jut back out into the parking lot. What we are then going to propose that we do is build a podium. It's not exactly where that the old Papageno space jogged out into the parking lot, but a podium right there and then building units above it. So we're taking up 
almost the same surface area that was taken up from this building originally. We just created parking with residential units uh, above it. Um, and with that being said, well, I guess one more thing, the only other commercial space we are altering would be on the Mass Ave side where we added uh, the lobby to the building where we have our bike room, our mail room, you can see it is right there, which is convenient for us because it allows access uh, to both sides uh, of the property. There's an alleyway that goes out back. Um, and we have long term bicycle parking inside there as well as short term bicycle parking outside. Um, we did send over the specs uh, for that kind of last minute and I'll let the architect kind of walk through what our lighting plan is, as well as um, uh, what what the bicycle parking exactly looks like but in summary that's that is what we propose you will notice above leader bank the, the top story is stepped back a little bit uh, that is actually how it is currently and it's done that way it's that is staying exactly where it is it's done for structural and load bearing reasons we really cannot move that and that is something to just note as you're looking at this kind of development when you're building on top of your existing foundation like this, you really do have to strictly adhere to, to what you do have and work around that. So we've had many iterations of this project, even more stories at time, but we do feel like this does blend in pretty, pretty well. We believe that we can make this work and, and it's all kind of coming together nicely for us. Uh, with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to the architect, Peter. Um, if you maybe wanna to touch on the lighting plan, maybe materials, kind of the look, everything that we were looking at as we were putting this together, just quickly. I do, I have a timer going here. We're about eight, six or seven minutes in. So just got a little less than 10 minutes left. All right, so we're doing good, we're doing good, John. If you could actually bear with me for a minute, I'm gonna take this down and find the better copy of this this is very it's a it's this is a scan so just um you it's okay with me if you keep talking if it's okay with rachel i just want to find a better image to look at that would be rachel. great i've yet to see a clear image of this rendering <laughs> okay uh but look at that black and white photo like it's always been there so i'm peter sloak with market square architects um so to sum up what john said this is an addition and conversion 13 residential units to an existing commercial property uh, largely achieved by completing the second story and replacing some back of house commercial with units over parking. So mostly for the aesthetic, we aim to refurbish and enhance the commercial frontage uh, and some of the historical aesthetic along Mass Ave and to enhance the existing commercial with the design of the new structure along Medford Street. Uh, and we've used uh, materials that are, you know, play well with the historical languages there. Um, so this construction has also been considered to ensure that the existing commercial tenants will not be displaced. Um, so the other couple of things John asked me to touch on, uh, I understand the lighting may be a concern, uh, it, especially in proximity to other uh, residential apartments in the area. So we intend to provide uh, the minimum feasible uh, to provide a safe living environment, uh, particularly at the two pedestrian corridors surrounding the garage at the rear. Uh, so those, those exi uh, existing streetlights on the park terrace uh, along the back of the structure will remain. They'll be adequate to light that piece of the property. Um, and then anything that needs to be uh, you know, filled in at the ends of those corridors will be achieved with a couple of down lights right over the entrance and they'll be adjustable to ensure we're not uh, shining light onto adjacent properties. Uh, and then the, the indoor bike storage, uh, from what I understand, may be a concern as well. So that was all done in accordance with the bylaws. Uh, it's inside the lobby there, easy access to a public way. Uh, and then I believe we provided the spec from another project, which is in conformance with those bylaws. They're essentially the U-shaped um, bike racks where you can pack two side by side with adequate space on either side. Uh, and with that, I think we'll hand it off to Aaron, or do you want to hand it back to you, John? 
Yeah, um, Aaron, if you maybe want to step in and talk about the layout of the existing conditions for parking back there, how it circulates currently, um, you know, what we are proposing. Sure, John. And any other any other relevant points as well. Thank you. Sure. Uh, hi, my, na my name is Aaron Mackey. I'm the civil engineer. Um, I'm with Allen and Major Associates. Jenny, if we could first take a look at the existing conditions plan in the civil set, it is one yep perfect so you can see the existing spaces there to the rear of the building along park terrace um, they are tandem spaces so they're not efficient and um, they will be blocked in there's 14 total but only six are actually accessible so the remainder eight would be blocked in um, so the circulation is not ideal the plan is to um, formalize uh, a drive aisle you can we'll see on the following sheet uh, but you can see the piece john was talking about in the rear that uh if we go to the next sheet jenny we do show exactly the um it would be the site demolition plan exactly the portion of the building that's going to be demolished um you can see it with the bold line go if you keep going down a little bit um existing build, building to be removed so that's the the rear of papaginos that's going to be removed and that's the general vicinity where the proposed podium garage will be. Um, we can just move on to the layout sheet and we can take a quick look at that. I know times are concerned. So the gray hatched is the uh, addition area, which will be podium parking with the units above. Um, you can see we have a 20 foot wide drive aisle. Um, we are proposing 16 parking stalls uh, we'll have a formalized ADA stall close to the garage entrance. Um, we are providing a enclosed dumpster enclosure. Uh, it's angled there. You can see the angle that was done to allow, because Park Terrace is narrow, it'll allow a uh, easy pickup for trash removal. Um, we have a uh, concrete pad with eight short-term bike spaces along Park Terrace would be uh, Yep, right there in that corner. Um, if at the top of the page, you can we provided the bicycle parking calculation. Um, we figure the minimum required is 6.3, and we are proposing eight uh, short-term spaces. And also, we did count the long-term spaces, which will be interior. The minimum required is 20.6. We're going to propose 26 spaces inside. And uh, right to the left of that table, Jenny, we have the parking summary. So we did calculate the required parking to be 31.9. We are providing six spaces uh, where there was 14 existing. Um, and we can take a quick look at the zoning table, which is on this sheet, uh, which shows the minimum lot area. That's gonna remain, the lot's gonna stay. That's 18,929 square feet. Um, the frontage is going to remain the minimum front yard setback. We have a zero. It's going to be existing foundation to remain. Um, the rear side, rear yard as well. The foundation is right up against Park Terrace. That's going to remain. Um, and I know the floor area ratio will be discussed. You can see on note number three, we did put that calculation on the plan. Um, so we have. 28,373 gross square feet divided by the lot area of 18,929. We have a 1.5 floor area ratio and that's that's the uh, requirement for the zone. So we are in compliance with that. So with that, uh, a quick broad brush of the layout plan, but um, I'll pass it back to you, John, if you got any closing remarks. No, John, I think... Bob, Bob, can yeah, I say ahead, something? Bob. John, yeah. Uh, uh, we are seeking relief uh, for a number of different issues, uh, landscaped open space, usable open space, setbacks, uh, the uh, uh, drive aisle, uh, 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 as I say, uh, lighting and uh, some other issues as well. All of these uh, reliefs that we are seeking are within the jurisdiction of the ARB. That's our position. Uh, I, we believe our proposal and uh, the report to the ARB from planning indicates this, 
uh, comports with the substance of the master plan. Uh, it comports with the substance of the master plan because it's going to be mixed use and we're going to be supplying uh, housing, uh, residential housing in the town, which the master plan seeks to achieve. So we're doing that and we're converting space that uh, heretofore did not have that kind of residential space, which will now have that kind of residential space. And I believe that the proposal uh, is going to be, be a decided improvement to Arlington Center. And, and hopefully, if this proposal does get approved, it may encourage other property owners uh, in the center to do uh, some improvements to their property as well so that the center becomes a vibrant area uh, as, it, uh, as it was many, many years ago in a different guise. That's all I have to say. John? I'm all set too. I think we've reached our time. So I'm sure there are more questions will come up. We can expand on different things, but thank you all for the time. Great, thank you very much. I really appreciate the, um, the thoughtful proposal and looking forward to reviewing it. Um, I'd like to, before I open it up to questions from my colleagues on the board, um, turn it over to Jenny Rate and um, Kelly Linema, who I apologize, I forgot to include in the earlier roll call. So thank you both for putting together such a comprehensive memo. And I wanted to see if um, either you, Jenny, or, or Kelly had anything that you wanted to add before uh, we take questions from the board. Um, thank you, Rachel. Um, I'll start and then Kelly, feel free to jump in if there's anything else. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so um, I, I think that the applicant actually gave a pretty thorough overview of, of everything and is um, interested in being responsive to a number of the points that were in the memo. Um, and we also had some correspondence in between, which then led to some, you know, a couple of updates as was indicated by the applicant. Um, I think the things I would just say are still areas where it might be helpful to have some information are the following. The first one is uh, with regard to the um, sort of special features, you know, the lighting, the signage is still a little, is a little bit unclear to me. Um, I would just like a little bit more information about that. And also still a little bit um, unclear about what's happening with the existing tenants. There were some of the plans said uh, named prior tenants that are no longer there um, and just need to under, better understand the existing tenant structure making sure that nothing is, uh, are they proposing changes or not? Um, and then um, the other item would be the, I'm sorry, I lost that on my screen. Signage, oh, the other area would be the circulation on the site. Um, and this was raised, you know, I think it's a challenging, it's a, it's a tight space in the back, but I think it would be helpful to just better understand how they envision deliveries and uh, trash removal with uh, the potential that, I don't think that this was mentioned in that uh, brief presentation, but we the applicant has approached the town to um, think about a way to make the park terrace, the sort of um, the parklet that we have installed there to become a little bit more permanent. And if that were the case, I do think that there are some circulation issue that, issues that should be discussed in relationship to this proposal. So I think that that still needs to be discussed. Um, and that's with regard to you know, potential delivery trucks or vehicles, um, the uh, trash removal, as I mentioned, and of course, people coming and going for their parking spaces in the back, which is not a, none of those things are new to the building, but they would be slightly different and potentially a, a very modest increase. Um, so I think it's worth just understanding a little bit more about that from the applicant. Um, the last thing that I'll say is I, I actually think it would be helpful if the applicant might uh, consider going to the Historical Commission a little bit earlier rather than later in our process, um, just to start that discussion would be useful, especially since I heard the applicant state that even though four to four, uh, the Medford Street uh, side of the property is technically um, an historic protected property, and the, whereas the Mass Ave one is not listed on our inventory, is what that means. Um, but they suggested that they wanted the whole building to be reviewed. 
If that's the case, I think that they should start that sooner rather than later in the process would be my, my guidance to that applicant. Um, I think that those are the main things I wanted to comment on. Kelly, did I, do you have anything to add? Nothing additional, thank you. Okay, thank you, Rachel. And the end, Jenny, so thank do you, you want me to yeah. answer any of those really I, quick I, right that's now or no? Rachel right. will so, uh, yes, on I was that. actually going to ask you to address, um, why don't we start with the existing tenant structure and then I'd like to go to signage. Yep, that one's really easy because everyone that is there is staying there. We're not, nothing is changing. So what it means by existing commercial to remain, it's existing commercial space and the tenants that are currently there on leases with the owner. Great, and you have two existing vacant spaces. You said that you have one prospective tenant lined up. Um, can you give us the type of tenancy? Um, it is another tenant already in the building. Okay. That is, yeah. Okay. And that's for the uh, Papa Gino's old space to be clear because in the other space is our lobby. Uh, but there is Rachel. one other ex existing vacancy. Yeah. Sorry, go, yes, go ahead, Jenny. Just um, the Artful Heart space, which is still says Artful Heart, at least on the plan. Um, that's the other one that was unclear to me right. what was happening with that space. On the Bedford cool. Street side. Yeah, yeah. We're just actively trying to lease it out. Okay, great. Um, and then what is your approach to, to signage for the, both the existing tenants and the, the new tenants as well as the building signage? Uh, well, for the actual tenant space, I am under the impression that there's all tenant signage has to be reviewed if a new tenant were to come in and propose something. What we, you know, the landlord also has to approve that, which is a conversation we have with them privately before it gets in front of the board. You know, the goal would be to keep things relatively in line within within reason it still allow the tenants to have you know some uniqueness if possible but i guess our plan would be if something is presented to us we're not changing anyone's existing si signage because that's kind of a private uh, landlord tenant um, issue and no one's come to us either to try to change their signage so all the existing signage for the commercial spaces would remain as of now that's something that i'd actually like the board to discuss, especially in light of the significant changes to the to the building. So I won't, we're not going to answer that um, now, okay. but I think during our discussion point, that's something that I would definitely like the board to, to weigh in on. Um, okay. And then the other area that Jenny asked that I'd like more clarification that I'm sure my colleagues will also uh, request clarification on is the circulation on site specific to the park terrace parklet that has been proposed. Yeah, so Existing, we have, I think it was, Aaron can correct me if I'm wrong, 14 parking spaces, 16 now. I mean, as anyone is familiar with the area, as far as I'm concerned, there's no designated loading zone there on Medford Street. And the way that I know everything is used right now from Arlington Catholic to um, tenants on both sides of Medford Street as well, you know, as our tenants as well people just pull off to the side and, and park terrace or kind of make do with any space they can grab um, temporarily because there is no necessarily designated loading zone that I'm aware of. Um, trash um, is not necessarily a concern because they can pull right in angled and they can either back, if say that's cut off, they can back down to the parking lot and leave. Um, cars are going to be able to turn around in our parking lot as it's constructed with a new uh, application and, and pull out. Currently it causes more congestion because the tandem spaces, everyone is always backing out and turning. It creates a little bit of, of a cluster. So I do think that even though we have two more parking spaces, it's gonna be uh, greatly more organized and easier to see pedestrians, et cetera. Now, some of this may or may not, um, be necessarily viewed as a big concern depending on what does happen with you know park terrace and one of the thoughts just because i'll just touch on it quick is it does seem like it's worked out very rather nicely there we haven't had any complaints from anyone at our building that of not being able to get through i know that the businesses have greatly enjoyed having that outdoor seating area so the kind of thought was it's not really it's not really a part of this this hearing, but I will say the thought was the family would be willing to donate some seating and maybe a, a pergola or a structure if everyone was able to collaborate together and kind of create a little parklet there and more of a permanent um, basis. 
obviously that's not that here now. So it's a little bit hard to talk about. And there's a process which we that goes with that. But if that is something that would happen, we would definitely support it. We'd want to be involved. Uh, I don't think it's it, what I'll just say is it's working right now. Uh, and we haven't had any complaints. I think we're improving our circulation, especially with less cars backing out. So, I mean, the way that That's we're helpful. looking at it, yeah. yeah, we don't we don't see it as as an issue. Great, thank you. Um, and uh, the last question that Jenny had that um, was uh, regarding lighting. If you have any clarification on the existing proposed site lighting. Yeah, I think Peter touched on this briefly, but. We're, uh, there are plenty of street lights right there. We, we did um, propose two sconces over the entrance of the lobby, uh, just to kind of highlight that that is, that is an entrance. You know, we're not trying to turn the back of this building into, you know, Gillette Stadium or anything like that. We do have, you know, people living in that area uh, with windows in facing the garage area. So we would have lighting up underneath the garage. So basically it would um, shine down into the space. But if you are walking by, it's not like a light would be pointing out of the garage at you. It would be almost think of it as interior lighting. Um, and then you do have some uh, poles back there already. So that would be sufficient light um, on the street. Can you speak to lighting in that uh, new alleyway that's being created between the back of the existing building and the uh, side of the garage? I will just ask Peter, did you? Did you, I know that you looked at this. Do you, can you hop back on and just, what I would imagine is we would definitely have, we have lighting. I know that we'll have lighting over the door going back. We might have either safety lighting along the ground to highlight a pathway, which is probably most commonly what, what would happen there. Yeah, I think from, so our interpretation is the street lights will provide enough illumination to, to you know, light up that alleyway. And we intend to provide one fix fixture at each of those doors so that egress stair you can see on the screen to your left uh, as well as the back door into the lobby there will each have one adjustable down light uh, it's a floodlight basically so that will illuminate that end of the path um, you know and that'll be on all night uh, and they'll be adjustable so that uh, we can control where that light goes so that it's not you know pouring onto the neighbor's property so a full cutoff Light. Right. Right. Okay. Um, and then while we're just on that alleyway, um, that the back of that building is a sea of, of pipes and equipment right now. Is the intent to clean up the existing back of the, the building in terms of all of the existing tenant equipment or what, what's planned for that alleyway? I know that I saw some landscaping in there. Yeah, everything's going to be cleaned up. And then what you do see that in that alleyway on the civil plans are pervious pavers for drainage purposes. But yes, everything is going to be cleaned up, look vastly different than it does currently. Great. Thank you. Uh, so with Jenny's uh, questions being addressed, I will turn it over to Ken for any questions that you have for the applicant. Can I uh, say something one more uh, time, Rachel? Please. Albanese. Please go ahead. On the historical commission uh, uh, comment that J uh, Jenny made, uh, we don't concede jurisdiction in the historical commission over the mass uh, portion of the property. But when we go before historical, we uh, are going to have to present the entire plan for them to look at. Uh, that was my point, but I am not in behalf of my client conceding jurisdiction in the historical commission over the mass ab portion of the property. I want that to be clear. That's a hopeful clarification. Thank you. Thank you. I still advise that starting discussions early would be useful. Great. Uh, we'll go to Ken. Uh, thanks, Rachel. Uh, I'm very encouraged. I full, full heartedly support this mixed use project. Uh, this is a good step going forward. This is something that uh, I've been looking for for quite some time. Uh, but with that said, I do have a couple of comments. Um, let's start off with, is this parking garage enclosed? When I look at the plans, it looks like all, there's walls and windows in the parking garage on the first floor. Peter, can you step in to describe the walls and the windows? 
I'm just, I'm just uh, addressing uh, Peter, the architect. Yes. yes. Uh, if you can scroll down to the last render, I think we clipped the back of the garage there. You can get an idea of about the head height of those openings. So it'll be, oh no, our dumpster's in front of it. Um, so it will be, uh, we'll continue that. I think it's in the elevations actually. We'll, we'll continue that uh, same material from the wall above uh, up a little bit. It's the, it's the one on top on this sheet. There you go. So we'll have, we'll have clapboard at the lower level there over a very thin brick base. Uh, and on the sides, as you can see in the plan there, there will be openings which will meet the minimum uh, to make this a uh, passively uh, ventilated garage. So this won't need mechanical ventilation. Okay, so you're saying that the garage right now will not require mechanical ventilation. So you'll have, I don't know, I think it's a, a third or one half of the elevations being open? Yes. Okay. Um, Going back to what uh, Rachel had stated earlier, uh, you, you sort of creating uh, one alleyway and half an alleyway on either side of, of the new building. Um, I would like to see you guys maybe do a uh, an elevation or a sketch of that alleyway there and, and, and realize what that's gonna look like. Um, I don't want to envision this as a uh, an alley where it's a uh, single block Back of the uh, back of the uh, stores, and then a CMU block on the on the garage. I, I I'm more of a I I, I want to see it more like uh, like I don't know uh, one of those uh, small tiny streets in Paris, you know, where you have a little more romantic paved uh, cobblestone roads, and it's it's something elegant you wouldn't mind walking down, not something you're afraid to walk down. This is the center of town. I don't want it to be like. This is not a nice area to be in, and uh, you know I think it, uh, I think there's a parking lot out back that way. There's a church. It's 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 a very nice open parking area. You want to have an it could be a, a very nice uh, way in to some of these stores in the back, or uh, a way into a, uh, what's below the parking garage. Uh, I just want to see what you guys want to do there more, if that's uh, okay to ask for. Um, if I would now go, can you, Jenny, can you go to the second floor, please? The floor plan itself. Yes, please. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I'll start with, um, you, you left one shaft um, there for the um, spaces below. I believe there's a couple of restaurants there, right? But uh, one's a diner, one's a Chinese restaurant, and the other one is a Mexican place, uh, if my memory goes correct. And I don't think all that, that one shaft will, will do it. I think you'd have to split that shaft up so it's above each space. Because otherwise you're, you're, you're bringing horizontal ductwork across all these, the back of all these uh, shops from different places. And that's just going to be a nightmare to fire rate and separate. You, you following me? Uh, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, Ken. I believe both of the restaurants are down that end. So this is, uh, they actually have uh, design build MEP on this project, but uh, the intent would be that since this structure does not exist here now, you know, you could effectively create that duct work uh, and then switch it over once you have the chase in place. So minimum interrupting services there. Um, but I hear what you're saying. You would, you would need multiple chases if, for example, there was a space on the other side of the building. Um, at yes. this time, we don't have that. I would just strongly consider consider that it gives you more flexibility for spaces below too. And you know, right now you're early enough laying up these units. Uh, my other question now is, if we were to look at look at these units closer, if I were to look at your you know, unit A five, 
it's down the inside corner at the end of, end of the uh, alleyway there. Is there a window to that bedroom? No, so that would be a, sh a shared light bedroom. So effectively, and I mean, we, you know, we get into this past SD as, as to how that would work, but effectively that wall there would not be the ceiling. Okay, so essentially you're saying that's a studio. Well, sure. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm not gonna go semantics. But, all right, and then if you look at some of these um, other units here, uh, what's the other one? The one on A12 and uh, on the other corner, A12, A A11. If you look at A11, you have the living room at the actual corner, which is the most open space and it reads the best. Can't you do something similar to that in A12 where you, you have the, the bedroom in the corner now where you had the opportunity to have the whole space out that way there. So if you can just flip the... Um, the dining room, I mean, uh, leave the dining room where it is, leave and move the living room over to that corner there, take the bedroom and uh, closet over to the other side. Now you got something very similar and you have nice corner views. I mean, I'm I, you... we, we generally do our best uh, to make that happen. And that unit I actually looked at for a very long time to try to make that happen. Uh, it, it's actually because of how narrow this block is overall. Um, and if you can scroll up just a little bit, you can see that dimension there. Um, just the way the corridor works out, you can really only get that living room on the corner efficiently in one unit. Um, it, it, it is, I mean, I don't really have an answer for you as to why, but I did look at that for that reason for a very long time and we weren't able to make that work. I don't know. I, I would just rather see uh, right now you have a, uh, a window into a closet and a window to a bedroom. I'd rather have both those windows into the living room as opposed to having one window in the living room. It's just the quality of space there. You're trying to create a nice space there to maximize your rent. So, you know, I, I just recommend looking at it again, okay? Uh, this stairway that goes down from the second floor from the second floor is that something you can add on to the building or are you going to cut through the existing structure of that uh assume that's the chinese restaurant at the corner right uh that is the chinese restaurant that will be coming out of the tenant space yes so you so you're actually going to cut into that your floor space and go down that way there all right so you're gonna you're, you're already cutting that in can you put i i would just go the same way i'm um, the way uh, this is laid out, you, you got the living room right in the alleyway there. I would move the stairs down a little further uh, in toward the alleyway there and then uh, somehow see if you uh, uh, flop the, the bedroom in that corner there or the living room in that corner. Uh, right now, you just have a big blank wall there where, right. you, had, where you had the opportunity to throw some windows there. Uh, and, and add some more light and not, not, not rely on this alleyway here for all your light and ventilation. And I know you're not getting any views. You're just looking right across to the other window. You know, uh, it just doesn't seem uh, like you're maximizing what you got there. My other suggestion to you is in this alleyway here, typically uh, I've seen in the past is if you have bedrooms lined up in the alleyway there, I would offset the windows such that they don't look straight across from each other. Same with the living room. If you just moved it down one, move it over like a couple of feet uh, one way and the other, the other couple feet the other way, so you look straight into another wall as opposed to indirectly into the unit. That, I'm just, these are just suggestions. To, I'm trying to, uh, I like the fact that you're doing this, these apartments up here, but I, but I want you to uh, maximize the, you know, make these nice units. I don't want it to see, seem like, oh, well, you know, they, they do this mixed use in, in the town and, and you get these crappy units. Uh, I apologize for using the word crappy, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, I, I want to maximize the niceness of these units and be able to have nice spaces up there. And I, I think you're, uh, if you take a little more time looking at that, you might be able to get, get a little more uh, out of that. 
Um, but besides that, right now, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the project. I think it needs a little massaging and we need to learn a lot more about the materials you plan to use. Um, I looked at these uh, elevations and they seem kind of vague. You gotta give me materials, maybe a blow up area. Did they submit any material, any uh, material samples, Jenny? No, not at this, not yet. Okay. No. I think that'd be a, a, a good next step to see, you know, are you using hardy plank? Are you using cement board? Are you using panels? Uh, you, you have any PVC in this? I, I don't I know exactly what you're doing here yet. And maybe that's true. You don't need to do that right now until you talk to the um, historic, but all that stuff would be nice. Uh, you know, it's a great opportunity. It's one of, it's the first one of its kind here. And I don't want it to uh, uh, miss a few things and have, have you look back, look bad on. I think it's a great opportunity. It's a good first step. Thanks. That's all I have for now, Rachel. Thanks, Ken. Uh, Jean, we'll go to you next. Thank you. Um, yeah, I agree with Ken that it's a very promising proposal and will be a nice addition to that part of um, Arlington Center. And I agree we need to see more about what the exterior of the building will look like. I do have a few questions. Maybe the first question is for the architect or for maybe the architect. Is there gonna be a new roof put on this building? Yes. What's the possibility of putting on solar or at least making it solar ready? It, it is solar ready right now. And if this project goes forward as we do for all projects, we go out and try to get proposals for it, but it will be able to handle those loads and be solar ready. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, what's the proposal for electric vehicle charging stations in the parking area? Uh, we do have one back there. I believe it's called out, isn't it, Aaron? It's, it's right out. It's one of the uncovered spaces. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm a little curious about the 2,457 square feet of landscape open space. Jenny, can you put up one of the diagrams? Because I'd like somebody to walk me through how you got up to that number. I would ask the applicant to indicate which plan they want up for this question. Aaron, can, Aaron, can you step in? So oh, yeah, I would recommend, could we take a look at C-102? Thank you. So the open space we utilized would be the landscaped area and the pervious paver area. Um, so both the alleyways adjacent to the proposed podium garage, we're using the calculation per the definition. And also on the following sheets, we do have a landscape plan we haven't taken a look at, um, which we could probably touch on that right now while we're at it. Um, it would be sheet L101, a little further down in the set, second to last. Um, so adjacent to the, the building and the, the pervious paver walk, um, we are showing landscaping strips on either side. So um, on the left plan left, we have an Arbor Vitae row um, as a little buffer between the abutter and a little screening. And then in between the existing building and the garage, that strip is going to get some more uh, lower shrub and um, sh smaller bushes. And we do have one flowering tree we are proposing near the dumpster for additional screening. So it's basically the two walkways make up most, if I understand, make up most of the Correct. landscaped open space. And Correct. they're mostly just um, pervious pavers, not really any trees, shrubs, ground covers, 
grass, anything like that along the two walkways, or there are? Um, there's Arbor Vitae Row uh, along the uh, abutter. Um, some of the plants we utilized, looking at that table, um, we have some hydrangea, um, some boxwood, pasta, and daylily. Those would go um, in the alleyway between the existing building and the proposed garage. In this, in the space between the the walkway and the abutter, is it possible to put in any real trees as opposed to arborvitaes? It may be possible. I'd like to confirm with our landscape architect on the 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 minimum width she'd like to have there, but five feet should be sufficient for some kind of larger tree. But we do like the arborvitae row for screening, but definitely we would be open um, to what the board would like to see there. I, I think, I, I mean, I'm not speaking for the whole board, obviously, but just for myself, I think when you come back next time, um, what are the possibilities for some trees? And then, okay. you know, then there can be some discussion about which seem to be the better options um, for that. Um, okay. Next question um, on the transportation demand management plan. Did I miss it or is there not really a written plan here, but just a suggestion of a bicycle share? Uh, I, I think uh, Mr. Benson that uh, we are planning on uh, uh, complying with that. Uh, the transportation management plan. We do. We are going to have covered bicycle parking. Uh, we would like to try to provide bike sharing as well, and we would also like to provide. And I'm saying like to provide because there's no guarantee that we can make that happen right now. But uh, preferred parking for a car carpooling individuals. We can indicate to the tenants that there would be prefer, preferred parking for carpooling tenants. Can we mandate that? I don't think we can mandate that, but we can certainly suggest that. If any one of those items are not to your uh, thinking acceptable or the board's thinking acceptable, we are open to whatever suggestions you may have with respect to our complying with the Transportation Management Act. Yeah, um, I guess I just think that you can't count the required bicycle parking spaces that are required by the zoning bylaw as part of your transportation demand management plan because they're already required by the zoning bylaw. So um, I need to think, and maybe we'll have some discussion with the whole board about what a transportation demand management plan might look like for this, but I don't think you can count things required by the bylaw as part um, of Just as a point, Mr. Benson, mm -hmm. when I read that language in the Transportation Management Act, I read it uh, that we are to provide covered bicycle parking. Uh, I don't read it the way you may be reading it, but I, I could be reading it wrong. Okay, I think, um, those are all my questions for the moment. Thank you. Great, I see that uh, Jenny has her hand up. Thank you, Rachel. Um, just to quickly get on this transportation demand management requirement, which we do need a transportation demand management plan. That should have been my fourth point. Um, so uh, the, the reality though is um, I, would, I would agree with Jean that we wouldn't wanna double count the bike parking. It is also a little bit of a conflict in the bylaw that I'm picking up on because we have a requirement for bike parking, but we also make it clear that as part of TDM, one of the three methods could include bike parking. So as a count, as a way of satisfying transportation demand management. So that, that might be relevant in a situation where bike parking is not being provided. In this case, it is being provided. So I would suggest to the applicant that they look at 6.1.5C and the nine options that are available, scratch out bike parking and go to the eight others and pick three. That would be 
um, available to them to comply with the transportation demand management in order to be um, able to access the reduction in parking that they are requesting. Thank you. We'll do that. Thank well, you. I, I had one question I forgot to ask, and maybe this is for Jenny. What's it mean when it says park terrace status unknown? On, I think on that's a pages? mistake. That's in their, that's actually in their, I think that's in their civil plan. Mm -hmm. um, I, I brought this up with the applicant. It's a public part of the street. The back part is a private way, but it's the private way is all the way back in front of the condominiums, uh, or I think it's a, a residential building anyway, um, adjacent to the Russell Common parking lot. The rest of Park Terrace is public. So I don't know why there's that parenthetical in the civil plan that says status unknown. Okay. I don't know where that might have come from. Maybe okay. the applicant can illuminate. Yeah, I can chime in there. Um, so the our survey department would do research and determine if they could figure out if it was a public way in the width based on their research and they must not have come up with a solution there. But uh, maybe we can reach out to you, Jenny, and and get some plans and we can get that updated. Yes, that would be great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to Melissa next for any questions for the applicant. Um, no, I can appreciate why, um, at least with this project, the mixed use element bringing in the housing. Um, my initial question is on, you know, the access to the outside from these units. Um, is this kind of a forming of a balcony from this um, step back here? I can jump in and answer that. So where you see above our lobby going across Leader Bank and around the corner, it is a very small, something you could walk out onto. I would not count it as gathering space, which is why if you look closely at our plans, it's not a common area for tenants as we don't think that that would be safe or a good idea. This, especially above Leader Bank and plan left, that's where the, the load bearing can support. Um, so yes, technically it is a very small, I guess you could call it, call it balcony, um, but again, private for those couple of units that have access right to it. So from this image, how many units has access to this outside space? I believe it is two, is, is that right, Aaron? It's, I mean, this, uh, Peter. This Peter here. It is two yeah. units, and if you go yeah. up to our second floor plan, you can see where they access those uh, balconies. It's um, page six in that document. Jenny, what document is that one? I'm trying to find it on. It's it's in this pack. The, uh, yeah, the door is two, I believe. You you want to look at this one, or do you want to look at a different one? Uh, the floor plan, please. The floor plan, okay. You can look at A102, that's where I found it. Okay. It doesn't like when I scroll on the screen, that's why I keep <laughs> doing that, so I'm sorry. I, well, I do know um, where it so is. From, what, please bear with me. So in thinking about the project in terms of access to outdoors um, for individuals who are living there, um, is there access to kind of a rooftop or common area then? Uh, there's not. Is there any consideration for that? I know we talked about solar and would it be able to with or kind of structurally kind of set up for that? Well, we can't, what we're looking at right here, we can't move and shift around. And by the time you add potentially solar and the mechanical systems on the roof, you're not going to have any anything left really okay um well overall i mean i think at this point i don't have further questions i think so i'll kind of let it proceed from here great thank you melissa steve any questions for the applicant yes i um i, I do have a few um first 
Um, my, it looks like there is an elevator proposed, but not one currently. Is that correct? That That's is correct. Okay. Um, now, I noticed that the roof plan uh, designated air source heat pumps in several places with, you know, a manufactured model to be specified later. Um, could you just talk a little bit about the heating and cooling for the building and uh, to the to what extent will natural gas be used? Uh, well, to my knowledge, uh, unless the commercial tenants already have natural gas, we do not intend to supply gas to the residential units. Uh, heating will be entirely electric. Uh, the air source heat pumps will be located on the roof. They will be a mini split unit. Uh, so each room will have its own zone. Uh, they're the wall mount kind of units. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the, uh, that sounds good. Um... So I just wanted to give to um, express a little appreciation for the memo on how flyover construction is done. Um, I did not know that, and it was you know, sort of useful to understand uh, understand how the the project would go together. Um, regarding stormwater management, uh, it looked like a fairly significant reduction in runoff, and I'm wondering if. Um, maybe your civil engineer could just sort of like walk through how the overall system is designed. Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, Jenny, that's going to be our draining and drainage plan. That is sheet C103. Um, so we handled stormwater runoff with uh, two different types of systems or BMPs. We have the mm -hmm. pervious pavers, um, which actually, um, I will wait till she gets it up. So we will, we have the addition roof leaders will feed into the porous pavers on the plan left. So the downspouts from the new addition. So the porous pavers, if you look at the details, we, there is a, a reservoir course so under those porous pavers, you'll have a, um, a filter course and then a reservoir course uh -huh. lower. Um, so that'll, that'll be a perforated pipe so that the roof leader will feed right down in, in, into that reservoir course and it'll be able to infiltrate into the ground. Now the other side, the other porous pavers, that's just gonna accept um, whatever rainfall falls on top of them. So you won't have quite as much stone beneath those. Um, that you can see the subsurface system that's beneath the garage, that's going to accept the existing roof. So I know it came up earlier, uh, all the pipes in the rear, we're going to eliminate those downspouts and we will collect them all and feed it to this underground system from the existing roof uh, drainage. And we had to do that because we're creating this alleyway and we, the existing roof leaders just discharge right onto the pavement um, so we had to collect all those mm -hmm. and put them underground because we would have flooded out the alleyway there. Um, so that system was designed to accept, accept a hundred year storm and infiltrate it back into the ground. Um, so you won't see sheet flow coming off into park terrace anymore. It's all going to okay. go into the ground. And uh, so on the left side of the plan that we're looking for, the thick dashed line, that's sort of, uh, that's sort of your underwater or underground recharge for some of the downspouts? Yeah, so that's that's going to accept the uh, the proposed addition roof, which will be downspouts fed into a perforated pipe in the reservoir course of the porous pavement. Okay, and you know, I presume that it will be done in such a way that it will also provide water to whatever plantings um, are intended for that you know, the landscaped uh, open space in that section. Yeah, I, I definitely think it'll help. There won't be any kind of barrier between the stone and the landscape section, so it definitely will help. Okay, cool. Um, and then just lastly, I, you know, looking through the application, I saw some mentions of, um, you know, restoration work on the parapet, the uh, sort of decorative ornamental concrete on the Mass Ave side, and uh, the possibility of doing a mural on you know, the north side of uh, Medford Street. I, I think those are all nice additions as well. Nothing further, Madam Chair. Thank you, Steve. Uh, so I have a couple questions before I uh, turn it over for public comment, um, and then we'll have a discussion afterwards. 
Um, so my first question is really around the scope of work for the facade restoration. Uh, so for example, you mentioned that you were looking at a new tenant already for the Papagino space. That storefront is not the most attractive. Is there um, the plan to replace that storefront and, um, and uh, bring that, upgrade that in addition to all of the upgrade work that you're doing within the, within the space? Uh, yes, there is what you can see right there where it says company co that is, um, that's the Papa Gino that is all, yes, that's all brand new, which okay. we tried to show an example, uh, of signage, which kind of shows maybe width or similarity to the, to the nails to the left of it. Um, and just some plantings out front, but yes, right. that is the new space. So on the Medford street side, um, those are all existing tenants. I know that there's one vacancy over there. Um, actually, Jenny, the previous one was a better one for the question I have here with regard to assisting the tenants with cleaning up some of the facades on, on that side. So for example, the first tenant to the right of Leader Bank, you know, there's a lot of old um, hardware that looked like it might've been part of an awning or, or other structures at some time. Um, what is the, the plan in terms of investment for the existing tenants? Uh, that, that facade there between, which would be kind of above windows in between both sets of windows would be uh, planned to reappoint some of that brick and kind of clean it up to make good as new exactly how it was. There are some cracks in there. We've actually done a little bit of, um, you know, patching here and there over the years, but kind of we're waiting for a revamp altogether to, to, to reappoint some of that brick. Great. I think that my question was more about the actual tenant storefronts and some of the um, old hardware and in items that seem to have been abandoned actually within the storefront area itself. Um, so is there, what is the, the plan in terms of um, the existing tenant storefronts on the Medford Street side? Well, old hardware that's not being used, we can certainly remove, but the rest of that, I, I really can't provide comment on because the, these types of things get put privately between landlord and tenants and leases, and we can't just go, you know, those are kind of be where you enter the private landlord tenant contracts to, we just can't really dictate those types of things. Sure. I, I, I think, well, I think that that's something that I'd like to discuss with the board in terms of um, taking a look at both some of the items that look like they need to be addressed in terms of maintenance on the exterior, as well as the overall um, signage, especially the leader bank signage um, on this building in general during our discussion point. Um, I do want to reiterate that I, I really would like to see a, um, a rendering of the, the back of the Medford Street building in that alley to understand what specifically will be cleaned up and what you will see. Um, my understanding is that that alleyway actually leads to the um, residential lobby. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, and I think to Ken's point, understanding the, um, the elevations of the garage are, are very important as well. Um, let's see here. Uh, one of the other items that I, I think Jenny also mentioned that we need to better understand is the commercial um, loading and delivery plan. Um, in terms of the dumpster enclosure, did you have details? Uh, I didn't see a um, enclosure detail, but I might've just missed that on the, on the civil sheets in terms of the materials. Aaron, I think that does call it out on there, I, I believe, correct? Yes, we do call it out as an enclosure. I'm looking at our details now. We don't have that specific detail on there, so we, we can definitely- I'd like to see that, that if I could at the next meeting. Yeah, yeah. sure, no Great, problem. thank you. Okay. Um, uh, I also would like to understand, you, you spoke about the type of mechanical units. Again, if we could understand the height of those units um, relative to the, uh, the, the height of the parapet um, for at a, at a future meeting, that would be good to see as well. 
And I think that's all I have for now. Um, let's see, before I turn this over for any questions uh, or comments from the public, I'll just um, ask if any of our board members have any further questions. We'll obviously um, engage in some discussion following the, uh, following the public comment period. Uh, Rachel, I do have one. Please go ahead, Ken. Just, just to follow up. Uh, it looks like you have one handicapped parking space on the inside of the garage, furthest in. That's correct, yes. Uh, so if that's the only one you have, that's assume a van handicap spot. So there's clearance for a van, 86 or 84, whatever that number is. Peter, can you speak to the garage clearance? Uh, yes, it, it meets those requirements, yes. Okay. That's it, uh, Rachel, sorry. No problem. Anyone else? Questions before we turn it over to public comment? All right. What this point... Rachel, just really quick, sorry. Um, sorry, I didn't... I'm... No, that's okay. I'm I, there, Jenny. I, um, I'm not waving. <laughs> um, so the, that point about the van parking space is important because it's actually, you have sort of conflicting statements in your application about this, which I think I noted in my memo. In one place, if I didn't, I'm sorry, but in one place you said that it was just a, an accessible, an ADA space, but in another point um, in your narrative, you said that it was van accessible. So I think making that clarification on the plan itself is also necessary. And then also having some consistent narrative around that would be useful because it does say two different things within the same application. Thank you, Rachel. Great, thank you, Jenny. All right, so at this point, we will uh, go ahead and open, um, open the meeting up for, uh, or this item up for public comment. Any member of the public, public wishing to speak, please use the raise hand function, which is at the bottom of your Zoom screen. I will call on you in the order that hands are raised. Um, when I do call on you, please identify yourself by your first, last name, and address, and you will have up to three minutes for your comments. One second. All right, so we will begin with uh, Susan Stamps. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Um, I am Susan Stamps, uh, Grafton Street, and I'm on the tree committee, although I am not speaking for the tree committee, we have not had a chance to talk about this project. What we have talked about is the project next door, which is Broadway Plaza, where 12 trees are going to be coming down uh, in the next several months for uh, complete reconstruction of the, the plaza walk, walkways. And that is going to be a tremendous loss to that area of town. Can you hear me okay? I, I can, if you could tie it back to this particular- Yeah, yeah. okay, fine. So, okay. I mean- okay. Sorry, and just to let you know, there will be a, a public comment where any, anything you'd like to speak about at the end of the meeting, you're more than welcome to. Oh, well, no, I was just, okay. So just to emphasize that, this is an area that um, already does and will even more in the, 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 the immediate future need more greenery. If you just look at the picture, it's a nice block. Um, it could use a lot of greenery and it could use trees to clean the air. Um, that whole area is very hot. And I'm wondering um, for one thing, if the designers have thought about, I understand that it's a, it's a small space, I wonder if they have considered doing any green um, walls, living walls um, with plants on them um, that would add very interesting aesthetic um, interest to the buildings and, and go a long way to helping the heat island effect of that area and clean the air. Um, so I wanted to bring that up. It's, it's new, but you're starting to see it more and more. Um, to do the green infrastructure like the living walls. And I don't know what's available up there above the first floor, but if there's any um, horizontal space where you could do any 
any small trees or just anything you can do up there that would be good. The, um, the very, a small amount of vegetation you are planning to plant um, is not going to do very much in terms of um, either aesthetics or cleaning the air or uh, helping to um, absorb all the, the carbon emissions from the traffic. We would like, um, it would be good to see a larger tree than the service berry and to see if you can make room for more trees in, in some way. And um, finally, I would just mention that if you could work out a deal with the town to put some beautiful planters with flowers and, and greenery and so on. If you see what a lot of uh, retail places have done in East Arlington, it's really very beautiful. And it would be nice to, to, to make that area, which is a central area of our town, um, look, it, it's an opportunity to make it look really nice. So thank you very much. Thank you, great suggestions. Uh, the next speaker will be uh, Greg Maz uh, Mazmanian. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Jen. Um, my name is Greg Mazmanian. I'm, I'm the operational director for our LLC. We are actually across the street on Medford Street. We own property on the corner of Broadway uh, all the way to the Regent Theater, which would be uh, 1, 3, and 5 Medford Street. I'd like to congratulate the owners of this property for investing uh, in the future uh, in this particular project. It's exciting to me. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with our property, we try to keep it at grade uh, and improve it along the way. We did a fairly large renovation about eight years ago uh, and worked with the Historical Society to bring our property up to grade. There was a comment made by Rachel relative to the, I think it was really in reference to the awning structures on those retail shops. Um, if in fact you want a first class rental property, I would strongly encourage that the landlord uh, make one uniform awning if that's, the, if that's the design he wishes to use or siding, signing with downlighting um, Similar to what we have, uh, we have an awning that runs 180 feet around the whole property, uh, which uh, aesthetically um, and also environmentally helps from an air conditioning standpoint. But uh, when I look at this particular rendering, uh, it's lovely. But when I look at all those hodgepodge awnings and structures, it's just not attractive. Um, so that would be my only comment, other than I congratulate the owners for investing in the future of this particular area. Thank you. Great, thank you. The next speaker will be uh, Don Seltzer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. Uh, I'd like to begin by um, acknowledging that this project is very much in the spirit of what was passed five years ago for mixed use um, development. Uh, it retains the ground floor commercial space while supplementing it with apartments above. And I think this is very close to the vision that town meeting members had when they voted for mixed use development. Uh, the only problems that I'd like to bring up tonight have to do with meeting the bylaw requirements for open space. Uh, beginning with the landscaping, it seems like most of it is concentrated in these 70 foot long narrow alleyways on both sides of the garage, um, running from southwest to northeast. The first 15 feet of these alleyways isn't going to receive any sun throughout the year. It slowly gets better as you move up the alley, but even at the far end, all you're gonna get is um, four months of the year in which they get no sun at all. And the rest of the year, they're going to get about 36 minutes a day of sunlight in mid afternoon. And I really doubt that any of the plantings that are planned for there, other than the hosta is going to survive for any time. The other um, question is the usable open space. 
the application is claiming that they're somehow exempt because the current property is non-conforming and therefore they don't have to be conforming. Well, this isn't true. There's no residential component of the existing property. Uh, so there's no requirement for usable open space. It's the addition of 13,000 square feet of residential that triggers the need for adding usable open space somewhere. And it is possible um, because the housing starts at the second floor, any floor area, any roof area, I'm sorry, of the first um, story can be used for balcony or rooftop open, usable open space. It, it is doable. So I hope um, these plans can be adapted so that the tenants who live here do get some of this outdoor space as required by our bylaw. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any yeah. other uh, members of the public um, with us? Any other, uh, sorry, if, uh, is there anyone else who wishes to speak this evening? Okay, seeing no additional hands raised, I will uh, close public comment for this docket and I will turn it back over to the board for discussion. Um, and as I do so, why don't I start by um, listing the items that, that I heard that we would like the applicant to address in um, a future hearing. And if there are any um, specific items that you'd like to discuss further or items that you'd like to add to this list, I'll start by running through our roll call list again. Uh, so what I heard were we were looking for elevations um, of the sides of the uh, garage, um, elevations and renderings of the alleyway, especially of the area leading to the tenant space, more information regarding the building materials proposed. Um, I'd like to request, I didn't see in the package that was posted online the color renderings that we've seen this evening. I apologize if I missed it, but we definitely would like to see those um, to be able to review those in greater detail for the next meeting. Um, we had a request to add in a black iron chase on the uh, Mass Ave side of the building and to look at the required number that are um, needed for the existing tenants on the Medford Street side. There was a request to take a look at offsetting the windows on the second floor in the residential units that face the alley. Uh, there's a request for material samples for the next meeting. A request to look at trees uh, in addition to or in lieu of the arborvitae in the landscaped area on the far alley. Uh, a request for a TDM plan using three of the eight suggested uh, methods of meeting the TDM plan without using the covered bike parking as one of them, and details on the dumpster enclosure. So we'll start with Kim for anything else that you'd like to see or any specific discussion points. I'm sorry, there was one other one. I'd also mentioned that I'd like to discuss or have the um, applicant look at a full signage and perhaps awning plan for uh, the full tenants, um, tenant group within this building. Go ahead, Ken. Rachel, you might want to add, uh, to add in the, the solar field potential on the roof plan. Confirming it's, that it's, it's solar ready? Yeah. Yeah, it's solar ready, but let's just start out with the, where you guys, where they plan to uh, incorporate solar, uh, uh, solar panels. Yep. Um, I, I also like them to, on the site plan to go a little further out. I mean, they go one or two feet past the property line, but I like to see what is across the street, uh, what's next door, uh, where are the boundaries of the church, because I think it's it's uh, it's a lot wider behind. It's not as narrow of a, a passageway back there, and there's a lot more light coming in there and. Uh, and that's a pretty major elevation that I uh, think they can add a lot more windows to, which will make it a much better than a back alley. It's not really a back alley right now because 
you can see those townhouses further down the street there. That's actually a nice street. And it's, it's set along that parking lot there. It's a nice edge. I think we've, if we follow that rhythm along, I like, I like to encourage that right along that facade there. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great project. I think they've done great. Uh, just want to do a few more things like that. And um, I know we really can't tell them how to lay out the, uh, the units inside, but I wish they do. I really wish they would just look at uh, and, uh, laying those units a little better where you don't have bedrooms with no windows or uh, with minimal light into living rooms. It just, you know, uh, it's a little more effort uh, knowing that we, we're encouraged by the project. Maybe they will take that next step and do a little more work on it. I would, I would appreciate that a great deal. Sure, I'll just note optimized unit layup. Okay. Thanks. And then uh, one other one that I just saw in my notes to uh, understanding the uh, roof plan with regard to the mechanical units and the height relative to the parapets. Yep. Great. Uh, Jean, anything I did not have on my list or any items that you'd like to discuss with the other members of the board? Yeah, there are a couple of things that I didn't ask questions about, but I wanted to raise them to the board to think about. The um, outside bicycle parking is around back. Um, and usually we require outside bicycle parking. We do require outside bicycle parking. So when people are biking up to the stores or to the residences, they see where the outside bicycle parking is. And, you know, and, and it's not going to be clear if you're biking up to one of the stores or to go in the front door that the bicycle park, short-term bicycle parking is around back. I'm not sure whether there's anything we can do about that, but I just wonder whether there's anything that can be done to move some of the short-term bicycle parking to either the Mass Ave or Medford Street sides. I'm really not sure. I just raise that because it's a concern that I had in looking at the plan. So. I'll stop. I have another thing, but just see if, if there's any discussion about that. I think it's uh, a, I will, a suggestion. A Go ahead. Or, oh, okay. I had, we, you know, I had th thought of this, and one of the things that we had already kind of thought we'd want to implement if the if the um, parklet came to fruition, I think it would be really nice because one of the best places I had envisioned for some more short-term bicycle parking would be almost in that area in a section of it. So I guess theoretically we could put something maybe temporary, but you're also maybe on sidewalk property. So it does get a little bit hairy in and around there. And there's also traffic in and out of the shop. So you wouldn't want someone to come flying down the sidewalk on a bicycle and clip someone walking out of, you know, the taqueria or getting coffee. So that does get a little bit tricky, I think, but I did think that if the parklet came to happen, it would be really nice to incorporate it in there which is something we'd want to contribute to as well. I just wonder, Jenny, do you have any suggestions or ideas for this? I think actually what John just said makes the most sense. I don't see a way to install something on the Mass Ave side, given the width, the sidewalk, and all the other conditions that are happening at that area, that particular intersection even. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be safe um, or uh, viable uh, in terms of just the, the dimensions even. It is also, of course, the town sidewalk. So, I mean, it, it could it could be something we discussed, but I don't see that being the best solution. And then on the Medford side, I don't, similarly, I don't think they have the width on the sidewalk to do something like that. We actually did evaluate a lot of different options when we laid out the parklet themselves. Actually, Kelly did the laying out of the parklet. So she's really familiar with the dimensions. <laughs> um, it's not very much space. So um, I think that probably migrating something to the parklet in Park Terrace, not on Medford, would make the most sense. Um, so we could talk about that, you know, offline separately uh, once we move into a phase of really talking about making that more permanent, which is this sort of separate. Um, well, I actually have, a, I'm sorry to interrupt, Jean, if you don't mind, since oh, we're on that topic ahead. of the parklet. Jenny, is that something for our next meeting that um, you could prepare for the applicant so that 
you know, and for the ed edification of the of the board understanding what that step is, because it sounds like there is um, a desire to contribute to the permanent amenities, which we may want to put into the special conditions. Um, and I want to make sure that we word that properly in terms of what a process would be, knowing that there is, I'm sure, a significant process that you need to go through in terms of the taking of a public way to make it a permanent amenity space for the for the town. Right. Um, I yes, I can, of course. Um, I think it, we we actually have started to take some steps in in having conversations about it. Um, I recall though that there's a responsibility on the this applicant to provide us with a little bit of a more formal proposal of what they were talking about. Um, it was alluded to that there would be different seating, a pergola. There were other things. There have been many other types of things mentioned. I think we need to hear from the applicant what they're, what they're willing to um, provide. And then we can sort of work with that. And of course, we'll involve town council in a conversation as well. But I, but I did just want to be very clear about this is not a part of our project. This is not a part of the application. It was something that the owners very graciously said, this is working well for the tenants. It's on town, it's a town road. And if the town were so inclined to go down the path of making this permanent, we would support it. You know, we really don't do it as a part of this project. We don't technically need it. I think is very nice of them. And it's a great gesture to offer some type of seating. I would honestly not feel it very fair to include that as a part of the order of conditions because it's something we're volunteering. It's not technically a part of this application, but it's something that we want to do. Um, but I just wanted to be very clear about that. We could maybe provide a list of some of the things we envision, but we have had a couple of conference calls even before this with other members of the town and um, some of the architects that would get involved in designing this layout. And we've already started to that conversation. Um, but I think that's just, I just wanted to be very clear about that. I, I appreciate that. I think it is germane to this conversation given that there are um, quite a few concessions from the town bylaws that are being requested um, in terms of the, the zoning relief. Um, but again, we can certainly discuss that as a, as a board. Um, Jean, I, I'll turn it back over to, to you, I apologize. Yeah, ju just the, the second point I wanted to make, um, which was about the parking, and I'm sort of a little bit thinking out loud for the other board members about this. It sort of seems to me that all the parking would need be designated for the residence units of the building and not for the commercial building. And we just, I think, need to make that pretty clear that that's what it's gonna be and that the commercial tenants would not have access um, to that parking at all. It, it, it wasn't quite clear or I couldn't find it very clearly stated. Maybe I missed it in all the application material, but that's what I'm thinking um, we need to do even if we were to reduce the parking. And I, I and you know, when the applicant is looking at the uh, traffic demand management plan, the other thing to think about is you get some more relief from parking if there are more affordable units. So I'll just put that out as something to think about. Thank you, Jamie. is the intent, Mr. Benson. The parking would be for tenants only. Residential tenants only. Not commercial tenants. Not commercial. I'm not sorry. Residential tenants only, not commercial. Yes. If we you. need to do signage to show that, we'll do yes. that as well. Yeah. Thank you. That was Great. it. Thanks. Thank you, Jean. Melissa, any further questions or uh, discussions you'd like to have with the board? Um, yeah, I mean, I think a little bit, I have to go back to the bylaws to understand kind of open space and how we can make these projects better in terms of sustainability. I mean, we are kind of seeing more innovative ways to deal with runoff, capture rain, whether it's rain gardens, the outside space and the narrow kind of plantings kind of agree with those may not be optimized in the best way. They're meeting the bylaw, but they're not 
significantly and meaningfully helping, I feel like. And so I'd like to know a little bit more about that. And Jenny, that might be just a conversation with um, our, our town staff. Um, in terms of the units, again, just to clarify, I know there's the affordables that are for rent and the other, P and the other units are for sale. Is that correct? Condos? They are, are all they rentals. They're all rentals. And what do you expect the like median like price or average price to be per year, per uh, month? It can range, I guess, depending on the market. Um, twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred. Twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred. Okay. Um. And then I just want to probably kind of follow up on Rachel's point about um. The parklet and maybe that I need to kind of see what the town has proposed because part of that's in the public right away of my understanding so i'd like to see kind of what the town would expect and see as the optimal proposal for a parklet in that area and then i'd see, like to see how it reconciles with maybe how um it overlaps and maybe any of the areas that would be shared for access in terms of circulation with this project um, I do think that um, it is, you know, kind of germane, like Rachel said, to this project, given the number of um, kind of the different allowances that we're looking for that for the special permit. So um, that is that. I think um, at least there's a couple other things, but. Um, at this point, I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. Great, thank you, Melissa. Steve, any uh, additional comments or discussion items that you'd like to uh, weigh in, have the board weigh in on? Oh, you're on mute. I didn't read that. I couldn't read that. Steve I couldn't said read that it. He, ne he needs to rejoin. I think he's having some technical problems. Oh, oh okay. okay. Sorry that, that I caught that I'll real quick. Drop off and come back. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, Steve, you're unmuted now. Oh. Start talking. There you go. What? All right. Well, after this, I because I can no longer see any of you. <laughs> um, Zoom is Zoom is Zoom is having a moment. Um, <laughs> Like I, I want to um, follow up with something that uh, Melissa said, and I and partially, and this is this is dealing with usable open space because I think this particular site is fairly representative of other B three, um, you know, commercial parcels in town, and we will likely run into this, you know, again. Um, the way our bylaw defines usable open space, it's kind of co a combination lot coverage and massing regulation. Um, and really, you know, I actually spent a, a, a fair amount of time over the weekend just sort of looking over the like the general plans and thinking, well, where would you actually put it? Um, my first instinct was to just lop off, you know, 25, 30, however many feet on the north side of on the high numbers of Bedford Street. Um, you know, just put take some take some space off there, put it put in a parklet. Um, it's a historic building, so I don't think that's going to, you know, that will is going to work. Uh, the next line of thinking was, well, can we do the same thing on the, you know, on the sort of like the left side of Mass Ave as you face the building, which would leave a big hole in the streetscape. And you know, to you know, Mr. Salter is correct that you know we could do some on the rooftop, uh, but only fifty percent because of a uh, you know there's a limitation on on landscaped open space that is um, you know ten feet above the lowest floor used for dwelling purposes. I think it's you know five three sixteen or so. But you know, there's 
it is an area where I, I think the applicant will, you know, need to relief, need relief, or you know, we're you know going to have to do something really silly with the building, which I, I think would be unfortunate. So uh, that is the only comment. Oh, next time, um, I was would like a little since while we're on uh, doing roof detail, uh, I'd like to you know, get a little information about the type of roof material that they're planning and, you know, basically whether or not it would be a, a high albedo roof. Um, and I'm going to try rejoining. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Steve. So um, I think, actually, could I uh, ask the architect, I believe I saw that in the plans that you were going for the lead point with um, a high albedo roof for um, the uh, reduction in heat island. Is that is that correct? Have you, have you identified the, the roofing material in your plans? I don't believe that was indicated on the plan itself, although that may have been in the lead checklist. Okay, so I'll just add that to confirming the, um, the roofing type when you return. All right, um, Attorney Anessi, would do you need me to go through? I'm not I, go through the list again of of requests that we have uh, made this evening uh, for your applicant to to take a look at. I have time tried to take them down as you okay. indicated them, uh, Rachel. Uh, if you can do it quickly, that might be good. Okay. Uh, just so I'm sure I have, I'm sure I have them all. Sure. Why don't I? I'll I'll speed read through them and uh, tell me to yeah. stop if you need me to uh, check them off as you do it. Fabulous. We're looking for elevations of the side, uh, more elevations of the uh, garage, um, elevations and or rendering of the alleyway space, especially the back of the uh, commercial tenant space. Additional uh, information on the building materials, uh, the color renderings. Um, looking at the black iron chases for the existing tenants on the uh, Medford side to ensure that there are adequate uh, routing for, uh, for the restaurant uses and also to add one on the Mass Ave side. Look at offsetting the windows in the residential units in the alleyway that are facing each other. Looking for material samples for the next meeting looking at uh, substituting trees for some or all of the arborvitaes in the landscape area, uh, the far landscape area, uh, creating a TDM plan, uh, dumpster, dumpster enclosure details, a full signage or awning plan for the building, confirming solar ready and showing wear on the roof plan, also in the roof plan, uh, showing the mechanical units and the heights relative to the parapet. A larger site plan showing the larger context of the building within the neighborhood. Um, we had a note just to op take a look at optimizing the unit layout, um, understanding the steps, the next steps in the making the parklet permit, specifically to itemizing the items that the um, if the owners are interested in contributing to as permanent amenities, um, confirming that the parking is designated only for the residents and not for the commercial tenants. This will obviously affect your the items that you choose to include in your TDM plan and clarify the type of roofing being used. I think we have I think we have all those. Okay. Um, the one real quick thing, uh, Rachel, because I don't want to come back with something and say we can do it and we can't. The awning plan, it, it's very difficult because, for example, the taqueria, that's a part of his business. I mean, uh, one other tenant just redid theirs as well. It's a part of their marketing, a part of their advertising. They spent money on these as recently sure. as, you know, 2021. I don't, I honestly don't know what to do. So I, so I don't know what I can come back with. Can, can I clarify what my, sorry, can I just clarify what my request is? Sure. I'm not requesting that you come back and say that they all need to be identical. You know, I know that that's what one of the public comments were. What I would like to ensure is that um, if there are, um, for example, for the areas that the, the two tenants, for example, that we need 
new signage for that um, we really look at the at the sign band. If there are tenants who um, have non-conforming signs who are in need of an upgrade, uh, that we take a look at the building as a whole and um, ensure that if there are signs that need to be addressed, we take the opportunity to do so while we are um, taking a look at the building. I, I, I do not necessarily agree that all of the awnings and all of the signage needs to match and be consistent for the entire building. I think um, having personally, and again, I'm not going to speak for the entire board. I, I think personally that um, having variety and seeing the brand you know, expression of each one of the tenants is is a good thing, um, but I I believe that as you're upgrading the facade of the building, I would ask you to take a look at your tenants that are non-conforming, um, and uh, I think that we need to take a, a, a look at the signage as a whole. Did you have a couple we, of the specific examples just so Leader, I can? Leader Bank is is one on the corner, um, which is significantly oversigned. Um, I'm just pulling up my rendering here. And there are uh, signs and awnings on the Medford Street side where, side where it looks like, for example, there is abandoned, um, there's some abandoned lighting above awnings. You know, it, it, there, are, there are definitely tenants who have not upgraded their signage in a significant amount of time. And it is um, definitely detrimental to the overall aesthetic of the of the building. Okay. So just quick One follow up: ratio. Was it this board that technically approved, like approved Leader Bank sign, for example, in that facade, facade, or how did that even come to be? I was I was going to say actually that's that um, I believe that signage had been approved by the board a long time ago, um, obviously. Okay. So um, I may I suggest that I I'll work with the applicant on this sure. question. I, we have I existing I, leases I, too, and, and we can't just unilaterally tell these commercial tenants what we're going to do with respect to the awnings over their commercial space. Uh, we'd be in violation of their leases. So I think the board needs to know that. Uh, we can certainly talk with them in terms of trying to get them to do some things. But uh, if they balk, we can't unilaterally tell them that they have to do something that they're not obligated to do in accordance with the terms of their lease, so. Okay, we can okay. certainly talk more about it, but there is precedent for major renovations for um, reevaluating the entire signage plan of, um, of, existing, of existing buildings. Um, and again, we can certainly take this offline and discuss, um, you know, Je with with Jenny further. Jean, and I'd like to just chime in on that and at least speak for myself on the awnings. At least I'm not looking for uniformity on the awnings or signage. Um, I think it gives it character, it enhances kind of the walkability and the attractiveness. Um, I think that enhancements though can be made to existing um, situations. And I think that's maybe where you can look at it. Even if you're you know, incentivizing your tenants to enhance clean, and if they were given some amount, a dollar amount, I'm sure they would find ways to make it look nicer. So those are things that I'm thinking of. Thank you, Melissa. Jean, you had something too. Nope, okay. Melissa, or at, to Melissa's point, um, could I, again, I'm going to follow up with the applicant on all of these items. We also have some other sort of minor items that we don't have to go through all of every single detail right now, but there were other things you didn't mention, Rachel, but so I can, I'll follow up with the applicant. Um, what I, what I want to caution though is um, the next meeting is next Monday. <laughs> so um, if this was going to be continued my question is, could the applicant realistically get everything to us in short order, essentially, I would two and suggest, a half days? I would suggest, John Murphy, that we cannot do it in one week. Uh, how do you feel about that? I would agree. So the next meeting what's, what's then- the meeting after the, that, Jenny? The, the 25th. Okay, John, that okay? 
Yep. All right. Great. Uh, is there a motion from the board to continue the hearing to October 25th? So moved. Second? Second. All right, we'll take a roll call vote. Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I am a yes as well. So thank you so much, and we will see you back on October 25th. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so that continues uh, docket number 3673 to October 25th. We will now um, move to the next item in our agenda, which is docket number 3348, 833 Massachusetts Avenue, which is a uh, continued public hearing. Um, and for this particular item, we were had requested a, an update, a monthly update um, for the progress on the Atwood House at 851 Mass Ave. And I will turn it over to Jenny. Uh, and I believe that we have, um, uh, Robert and Nessie is also going to be speaking on this item, but Jenny, I'll turn it over to you first to see if there's anything. I think can... also that the, the Director of Inspectional Services is on with us um, oh, okay. tonight. Um, and of course, Bob is here. I don't believe that anybody else is is on right now. I think at best, what we would ask for is an update on the meeting that was held um, with the historical commission to understand, you know, the next steps that they're taking. I do have, I did receive a report from uh, Mike Champa, um, but I think that the applicant can speak, or the applicant, the um, <laughs> the attorney for the owner can speak about it a little bit uh, further. Also, I was going to request that you close the public hearing tonight so that I don't keep noting it as a, an open public hearing, but rather we'll, we'll continue an agenda item as requested monthly um, to come back and, and provide these updates. And I can just put that on the agenda, but I'm not gonna keep the hearing open. So I do, I do need that action to be taken. Sure, we can do that this evening. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, Attorney Anessi, uh, yes. could you provide an update? We were last before the Historical Commission a couple of weeks back. And at that time, uh, there was a letter that uh, had been generated by Mike Champa. And Mike Champa essentially indicated that uh, uh, we were we had wrapped the building. And if, if you go by the building, you'll see that the building has in fact been wrapped. When we had our, uh, the item that, uh, by the way, remained open uh, was the surveillance. And that was a question of getting a hookup with the electric company. Uh, and I can ask uh, uh, Jeff Noyes about that in a minute. Uh, by the way, accompanying me tonight is Jeff Noyes and Monte, the architect. I've asked Monte to be on as well. Uh, when we were before the historical commission, uh, we had a discussion about what was going to be happening to the building. Uh, there was a discussion about the type of siding that was on the building. And the Historical Commission really didn't have any photographs that really depicted the type of siding that was on that was pre-existing on the building. I was able to come up uh, with photographs, very clear photographs, uh, of the siding that was on the building just before the siding was removed. And I sent those photographs to Joanne Robinson. Uh, we are due back before historical October 5. I imagine at that point, and, and by the way, we were supposed to be hearing from one of the representatives of the historical commission with respect to further guidance, okay? Uh, I did hear from Joanne Robinson but we did not hear from anyone else from the Historical Commission. My understanding is we're going back before Historical on October 5. When we go back on October 5, uh, I believe that Historical will be telling us the type of siding that we should be putting on the building. There was a discussion about different types of siding uh, before the Commission, uh, and we don't have a consensus we don't really know what we're supposed to uh, be putting back on the building. So I believe we're gonna learn that on October 5. Uh, we're prepared to do whatever the Historical Commission tells us to do. 
Now, I asked, I've asked Monte, and hopefully he is here, uh, to be here because Mr. Benson had a question that uh, I wanted pursued. And that question was, can we do anything to add on to the rear of the existing building to retain the building? Having in mind that our position uh, heretofore uh, has been that we are prepared to restore the building uh, and it's uh, going to cost up approximately $150,000 to do that. Uh, and once we restore the building, we're prepared to go ahead with the demo application and take it down. Once we restore the building to the satisfaction of historical, we uh, are still inclined to want to go ahead and take it down and put up a new building. But I want Monty to talk because Gene Benson asked a very legitimate question about what could be done possibly to the rear of the building to re, uh, so we could retain the building and not in fact take it down. Are you there, Monte? Hi, Bob. Okay. Monte, could you talk to that issue, uh, please? Uh, of course. Um, so that is one item that we did explore. Uh, and I, could, I think what the issue is, is the proximity of the house uh, to the CVS parking lot or the parking lot to the rear. Uh, so by adding to the rear of the house in the position that it's in now was something that we had issue with because essentially uh, adding to the rear would put the residents right into the parking lot. And as you know, that's also partially the turning lane that kind of uh, circulates everyone into the CVS uh, drive through so that, that was a, an issue that we had with adding to the rear of the house in the position that, that it's in now. So is it your position, Monte, that the better approach would be to uh, take the building down and put up a new building? Yeah, of course, that, that's something that, uh, again, we looked at in, you know, in response to that investigation or study that we did to the house, uh, if there was a potential to take down the house, move it forward so that we can uh, build something that is more adequate um, and can you know, provide the number of units that we, we think would make this more financially viable. So are you focusing uh, not just on the site itself, but, but on the economics as far as the owner is concerned? in terms of how the site could be developed? Yes. All right. uh, the, with respect to your, your comment about moving the building up front toward Mass Ave, would you repeat that again? So moving the, the building up towards Mass Ave. So again, I think that this is something that we've presented in the past in a couple of different forms, but shifting the building in a way that I think also addresses some of the, the urban planning initiatives that were developed by uh, Arlington. Uh, it would also address those issues, allow us to build a more appropriately sized building that would fulfill um, some of the financial needs to you know, hold up a, a renovation or a construction project like this. I, I believe that's where we are when we're going, uh, uh, Rachel, when we go back before the Historical Commission on uh, October 5, uh, I believe I'm going to repeat what I'm saying to your board now in terms of the position on the part of the owner uh, is that he would be prepared to go ahead and restore the building to the, sat the exterior of the building to the satisfaction of the historical commission. But once he's done that, he would prefer to continue with the demo application I'm given to understand that most of the sign-offs have been obtained with respect to the demo application at this point. Uh, of course, we would need a sign-off from Historical and they have the ability to tell us uh, how long it would be before we could in fact demo the building if that's in fact what's going to happen. I think that's my report to the ARB. Great, thank you. Jean, uh, I see that you had your hand up. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for um, presenting that. I appreciate it because I did ask last time whether it was possible 
to preserve just the facade and you know gut the inside, whatever, to end up with a viable project. I just would like to read to you though something from the part of the uh, special permit that was issued a number of years ago. And what it says is, it is acknowledged that 10 parking spaces behind the Atwood House are reserved for its use. It is further acknowledged that the plan of the site leaves space behind the Atwood House to accommodate a possible future expansion of the structure and that no use of that portion of the site will preclude any such expansion. It says other things, but those are the points. So what Mr. French said about an expansion and back impeding on the turnaround for CBS is inconsistent with the special permit that this board a number of years ago issued, which anticipated that there might be expansion and back and that the parking spaces and the entire place going back there are to be available for an expansion and back. So I'm glad you looked at it, but Mr. French, I think, looked at it not understanding that what he has the ability to do is design something that does go back into the parking lot and turnaround lanes. And that is allowed and in fact required by the special permit. So I'm now thinking you should come back next time and talk about the ability to do that. Now that you understand that you do have the ability to do an expansion and back. There, uh, I point out to you, Mr. Benson, that there is no mandate that we retain that building on the site. If you read the entire special permit report, yeah. there is language in that report that indicates that the applicant at the time yeah. could, in file, could in fact file for a demo permit. Uh, so it was anticipated by the then members of the ARB that the building might not continue to stand and could in fact come down. I, I agree, but you know what, what is sort of bothering me about this, aside from the many, many years in which the owner- I concede all of that, by the way. Wait to deteriorate is now we're going to be faced with, what is it gonna be a two year demolition delay coming up, which is much that more- That depends on the historical commission. Uh, which is much more than it would have been if, the owners had acted appropriately and quickly. So I, I think we're gonna have a discussion on the board about what our other options are at this point, because I'm not sure I'm happy with the things staying boarded up for at least two years at this point before it can get demolished. I understand, Mr. Benson. So we'll see. Right. But I would think it's worth taking a look at the ability to actually do what I asked last time because the special permit allows it. Does it require it? I agree with you, but does allow it. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Ken? Yeah, I'm taking a, a, a maybe a different uh, approach than Jean is. And I know you guys said that my idea doesn't work. But it just seems such a waste that we're going to force this owner to spend $150,000 to recreate this house and then turn around and tear it down. Can't we just find him $150,000? This, this bubble wrap looks ugly as anything, okay? I agree with Gene. But I would I'd like to donate that to a housing fund. And if I can get one family to have a, a for a house in Arlington, isn't that worth it? I don't know why this bureaucracy is such that we can't do that. It makes no sense to me. Uh, I'm not saying you, Rachel. I'm just asking the board, and then maybe Jenny can uh, ask, uh, I don't know, council, or if you have an answer on that, Jenny. It just makes no sense to me whatsoever, what we're doing here. 
think the answer from town council is going to be that the ARB does not have the authority to do that, but I'll leave that up to town council. Right, and I and I think Ken, what we discussed uh, in our in our last meeting was that with the option that the historic commission has to exercise a one or two year demolition delay, we have this wrapped building to look at if they don't spend the money uh, to uh, restore the facade that we, we have um, an incredibly blighted building, very visibly blighted building uh, that we need to look at for the, for the next two plus years. Um, Can I just say that was my point in asking um, the owners to take a look at whether it was possible since they were going to have to spend in the neighborhood of $150,000 anyhow for the siding. If there's a way they could see that as an investment in reusing the building, expanding in a back, mixed use, whatever they thought was appropriate. Moving it forward, right. Yeah. Well, can we- I, I certainly have an open mind. I'm sorry, Ken. Can we, sorry, uh, uh, that's all right, Robert. Can we then maybe draft a memo to the historic commission saying, look, uh, well, maybe, maybe all you guys don't agree, agree with me, but if the owner is gonna build it and tear it down, that's what they statement is, okay? I can't change their mind, that's their, that's their right. But can we have them say, look, don't fight them. Have them let, let them tear it down right now. No delay in demolition. If they if they uh, fund some sort of uh, affordable housing thing, and then we we'll go from there. I, I don't know. I just Can, the the problem I have with that is that if they tear it down, we're going to look at a hole for God knows how long. Because how many times have they come to us and not done what they've said they're going to do? How long is it going to take us to get plans and actually something built? So I think that there's a lot of I see where you're going and I understand your, your frustration. I think that um, there, there's, there's a, a process, unfortunately, by which we have to go through because we need checks in place to make sure that this particular owner uh, follows through on, on what is required. And that, again, a significantly blighted property is not as visible as it currently is within the, within the town. I agree, and I spoke my mind, and I will. I and I appreciate that. I'll leave it at that, okay? And you know, I'm not gonna. But I, I you know, oh, that's fine. I'll just shut up right now. Uh, Jenny, you had a comment. It looks like I was just gonna respond. Um, I'm. I wouldn't obviously speak for town council in terms of the sort of the legal possibilities, but I can say that um, I appreciate Kin's creativity and the approach that he's striving for and the outcome that he's looking for. I think those are all possibilities. Um, the challenge of course is uh, what is the owner wanting to do and whether or not the town wishes to flex its muscle further in part of this process. Um, I, don't, I don't see that happening, but it is of course, this board has has many options. Um, this perhaps is a good conversation for when we do bring, as we discussed at our goal setting meeting, having um, town council come to talk with us about our, you know, the the possibilities of what the redevelopment board can be doing um, now and in the future, and perhaps we can add this to this uh, to that discussion. But I I very much appreciate the creativity. I am very. I'm not in favor of essentially creating a stage set is what I'm calling it because essentially nothing will happen on site for two years, but it will look very nice. Um, and I, I don't, I really do not appreciate that. I think it's almost more disrespectful than what we've got going on there right now. Um, I would love to see it fulfill a better purpose. So um, whatever I can do in this process to make that happen, I am open to and will coordinate um, accordingly. But um, I appreciate Ken's points. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, there. Um, I mean, I just 
want to acknowledge the role that the um you know how to, to the the extent to which the ball is in the historical commission's report or in court not report court in terms of you know requiring the owner to restore the building you know i it so there's there's a question of well is it the historical commission's desire to impose a punitive punishment um and i don't know if that's the case or not but you know a a hundred a hundred seventy thousand dollars worth of work is a is a fairly significant punishment and it's also you know their decision of whether or not to um you know impose a you know a two-year delay uh, or a you know the delay the delay is up to them um you know i'm i i sort of suspect i i kind of am expecting us to wind up with a stage set as as Ms. Wright said. Um, but you know, it is what it is. It's not the most blighted site in town. <laughs> um, I guess we're we're gonna see. I don't have anything especially creative to offer. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Uh, Melissa, any any comments that you'd like to add? Um this is probably for Jenny. I guess my understanding that this parcel, right, it's a contiguous parcel with CVS, um, is, isn't the building then kind of based on its dimensions and setbacks? Like, isn't it already non-conforming? And if you do even demo, can you rebuild in a non-conforming? I mean, how, I thought you eliminate all of that. So trying to understand what the demo gets them. Right. This is a this is a something that Mr. Anessi is familiar with, and we have talked about it. I think it was last summer uh, when they started talking about their mixed use uh, proposal. Um, it does make things more complicated to take the building down, for sure. Um, the there are options that this property owner has in terms of dividing the parcel, um, creating an easement to the park. I mean, there's there there are things that can happen to make it. Um, easier for the applicant to move forward if they choose to at some point in time to apply for an EDR. Um, but I think that it, it is legally possible for them to do a new building. It just dep depends on what they're proposing. We, we still don't, we don't really know what they're proposing to do. They haven't really, that, that's what we're, we continue to grapple with for more than, a, I don't even know how many years now. Because... We can't do that. And we can't do that right now because right. if I do that, I'm insulting the historical commission. We're we're so. sort of in this in-between space. So I, I appreciate the question as to what could happen if they took the building down. We're unable to even entertain that without having a better sense of the uses and the other things that they're talking about doing. Right, but I guess that kind of then lends itself to the decision to keep the building, to find a way to keep it, kind of going back to what Jean was looking at. I think that that's a viable possibility as well. And I think if you had you know, within, the, within the 2009 decision, it outlines, as Jean noted, how that could be done. Sorry, no, Melissa, I, I talked at the same time as you. No, no, I'm just, I, I guess I'm just thinking. <laughs> and we had the property owner here at the last meeting. Is there is there probably ba bad blood that I'm not understanding from the property owner in motivating to get this done? Well, the property owner is on, okay? Uh, Jeff Noyes is on this Zoom. Uh, okay, and, I don't see him. And, and uh, I mean, he's paying me money. He's paying the architect money at this point. He's going to have to pay to restore the building. He's into this for money at this point. Uh, I don't think that he's going to be lax uh, this time around, uh, at least not on my watch. Uh, I think that we are going to bring this uh, matter to fruition, okay? One way or another, okay? It's going to happen at this point. So, but Jeff Noyes is on the Zoom. If you want to ask him a question, please feel feel free to do so. I think I did ask him last time. Jeff, are you on this call? Jeff, are you there? Yep. yep. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. 
Yeah, I, I'm here. I've been listening the whole time. So, do you live in Arlington? Remind me. I do not. We are Florida residents. Florida residents. Um, and, and you know how much, you know, this is on Mass Ave and how much the community cares about this space, right? Yes, we've owned the property for over 85 years. And I'm just curious, like kind of what your thinking is to kind of getting a project done. Why, why has it been so challenging? I mean, with what I'm hearing from Jenny that we haven't even seen proposals. And so I'm trying to understand that. And it's uh, challenging to try to do so on a Zoom with limited history only on what I've read so far, so. Yes, there, there, there actually has been proposals and that, that came to an end when we were required to fill out the demo permit to submit to historical. Um, in, in the process of filling out the demo permit, one of the requirements is to remove asbestos. And that requirement, unfortunately, removed the siding from the house, which was obviously a huge mistake. Uh, to get to the asbestos paperboard that was underneath the siding. The original siding is still inside the house. It was not removed, demoed, destroyed, you know, whatever. Um, so we are one signature away from uh, sending the permit to historical. And unfortunately it's taken between COVID and a few other issues, it's, it's taken an extended amount of time to get that done. So I, I see that Gene has his hands up yeah. um, and I'm cognizant of, of the, the time as well. I know that we have um, several other items to, to get through. Um, uh, Gene, uh, why don't you go ahead and um, share your, your comment and then and I'll suggest what um, a potential for us to, move on. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll be really quick. And um, I, I think I'd like to have a conversation with Jenny offline to, to at least for me to understand about what some of our options are. And I'm wondering, and Jenny might right now tell me not to do this, whether one of our options would be to amend the special permit, and maybe we should keep not close this out, but keep it open one more time so we can have a discussion about whether we want to amend the special permit to deal with the house in a different way. I don't know, but I'm just wondering. Jenny? Completely an option. Um, maybe we can talk about it. If you want to keep it open, then I would continue it to the 25th. Um, and we can talk in between about options. Will I, I be hearing? Will I be hearing from someone from planning between now and the twenty fifth? So at least I have something to discuss with my client and uh, Monte, the architect. Yeah, I think if there's um, if there's a recommendation that's starting to emerge, we can we can follow up with a discussion. We can follow up in general um, for all the points that have been raised. I mean, the board can't have a discussion between now and then. But because right. of the open meetings law, but you know, I think Jenny and I maybe would have a discussion. She would see if she wants to make a recommendation. And Melissa, if you want to participate in that, yeah. would you? Yeah, I, I would like um, that. That Thank would be you. okay. So Thank I will, Rachel, if it is okay with you, I'd recommend that I um, arrange a time to meet with Jean and Melissa to follow up on what to do and uh, what to what, you know, sort of make a recommendation to the board for the 25th. I'll also follow up with the, um, with, with Mr. Nessie about um, all of the other details that we've discussed. Thank you. And um, I also wanted to see, it's only a week away. I, I know that you had spoken with town council about coming in front of this board to have a discussion about um, some of the broader options that we have as an urban renewal authority, um, which may or may not have bearing on how we approach this. So um, is that something that we think would be potential for the next meeting or um, timing wise, are we looking further out? Um, on the next meeting is October 4th. So right now we 
we don't have any of our hearings uh, going to October 4th. So we might, so we don't have any other agenda items at this moment in time. So if, if Doug is available, town council, I can um, arrange for that to be sort of the centerpiece of the, of our agenda. Um, but I'll, I'll have to confirm his availability. Okay. Uh, I think that would be worthwhile exploring um, as, okay. as something that I think would help us with with next steps too. But it sounds, um, Ken, Steve, and Melissa, if you wanted to weigh in, um, I'm in agreement with Jean and Jenny's suggestion to um, keep our options open by keeping the special permit open for another month. And then um, Jenny and Melissa and Jean uh, speaking offline about uh, potential recommendations before the 25th. Ken? I'm fine with that. Uh, maybe uh, also to catch Melissa up, uh, there was a proposal that we met. I think there was two meetings. Uh, I'm not sure St Steve may, may not know either or Melissa. Uh, about we, that the project they proposed for that. Maybe they can catch up on, the, on those things there so it's not out of the blue. And uh, take a look at that and see what they they have an idea what was planned there. And if it's okay, Rachel, mm -hmm. I didn't mean to suggest that there weren't any proposals. Um, obviously I was present for the conversation about those proposals, but nothing had been formally filed with the right. redevelopment board <laughs> to proceed. So therefore we were sort of commenting on an idea about mixed use. So nothing had gone forward. And then of course you heard the rest of the story from the property owner. Okay. But um, I believe that those documents are on the redevelopment board page. Okay. Also, um, well, I can, I'll send, I'll send a follow-up so that you can, I'll make sure that you have uh, access to that in case you don't, Steve and Melissa. Great. Steve or Thank Melissa, you. any, um, Steve, I'll start with you. Any comments on that? Sorry, can I, did I cut you off? Did you have something else? Okay. Uh, any, any commentary on that proposal to keep the, uh, the uh, docket open another month? Uh, no, con no concerns uh, uh, about keeping it open. No, Great. no concerns, no objections. Okay, Melissa. I'm fine with that. Okay, uh, at this point then, do we have a motion to continue uh, docket number 3348 to uh, the meeting on October 25th? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Take a roll call vote, Ken? Yes. Dean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Thank you very much. Yes. For joining us again this evening. We'll see you in a month. You will. Okay. All right. So that uh, concludes our agenda item number one, public hearings. And we'll now move on to agenda item number two, which is uh, the ARB committee appointments for ARB members and designees. And I will turn it over to uh, Jenny. I think this is the third time. <laughs> this third time has We're all here agenda, finally. So I think you're familiar with it, but um, <laughs> if you need me to review, I can. Of course, this is our first meeting with Steve Revelek as a member. He's the gubernatorial designee. Um, and he had offered at the goal setting meeting to participate in the housing plan implementation committee, I believe. Um, so I think that you have your slate in front of you and you simply need to move to um, designate all of the representatives to those respective committees and working groups. Great. The only item um, I had a question about was whether the Arlington Heights Neighborhood Implementation Action Plan uh, needed to be <laughs> needed to be listed on here. So um, it was one of those committees where. Um, my understanding was you were deciding to participate, but the board had kind of. There was no official. I just wanted to. There was no to, official was connection, version, but I'm, so. I think you, you are, of course, um, we would welcome anybody's participation, but if you want to continue doing that, uh, if you want me to, I can amend the list and add that. It, that's, we don't, we certainly don't need to. I was just okay. questioning whether that one needed to be on here. Okay. Um, are there any uh, questions? If you 
want to let me know if there are any questions or discussion on this item, starting with Ken. No. Jean? No. Melissa? No. Steve? Nothing. All right. Uh, so we just need to vote to um, adopt the uh, committee appointments or approve, excuse me, the appointments and designees as listed. Is there a motion to do so? I, I amended it just so you know before you before oh. you decide to vote. Okay. On it, I added yeah. number eight because I, I do think it's important to acknowledge that you have been participating and you have been providing a good service to that committee by participating. So I'm I'm I've added that. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. Is there a a motion to a uh, approve the appointments as amended? So motioned. Second. Second. Great. Uh, roll call vote. Ken? Yes. Dean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you, Jenny. And this does not need to come on our agenda for another, uh, another year. Uh, okay, uh, item number three, we have a draft of the fiscal year 2022 ARB updated goals. Jenny, I think you're going to pull these up on the screen and these are as um, reviewed in our goal setting session in uh, on September 11th, I think. 11th. Yes. Any commentary, Jenny? No, um, I I can I'm happy to answer any questions that I didn't resolve um, when I made the final edits. Um, I did remove a lot of dates. Um, the one one thinking here is that we would have a fall special town meeting next year um, to prepare for zoning amendments because of just the time needed to do that. Um, so when I said fall of 2022, I was talking about a special town meeting. But we would still need to do the work through, through June, obviously, to prepare for that. Great. Thank so you, um, the, I think I think I captured, though, all of the other edits that were suggested. So I'll just run through and see if anyone has any comments, starting with Ken. Yeah, I thought we also focused on um, planning and, uh, on the Mass Ave and uh, Broadway Corridor, how to encourage uh, more um, development in those areas there. It's um, 1B um, or 11B, apparently. Um, <laughs> some extra ones. You, do you see that? I'm. I, yes, I saw I, that. I, I thought that was sort of. Okay. Um, and then there's also under economic development, I think there's, you know, continued ensuring we, we kept this from current year. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, any other questions, Ken? No. Jean? Just one thing in, in the number ones. So we have the actions review, review, review and consider. So they're not quite aligned. Review seems like, you know, should we review and consider, review and consider? So they're all the same. So it'd be review and sure. consider and review uh, or review. I don't know. I'm just wondering about the Yeah, word. the review is about like existing recommendations. Um, so like the Arlington Heights Neighborhood Action Plan has recommendations, net zero, connect Arlington. They all have existing recommendations for you to review. Mm -hmm. The other one doesn't have any recommendations yet for Mass Ave and Broadway. So that's why I think I wrote consider, but it could be consider and amend and propose or something to that effect. I mean, I have no problem with the substance of any of these. I just wonder about the, you know, sort of the action verbs like, you know, the committee that's working on the net, that worked on the net zero action plan is now trying to consider if they're gonna recommend some zoning changes. So we're gonna do more than review them, I guess. We're gonna, I don't know, make decisions about them. Um, 
Do you want to propose an amendment to this, some language? So Jean, are you specifically speaking to the review for items two, three, and four, the net zero connect? Oh, yep, yep, yep. So I think what we had discussed was we were going to review and um, endorse in the same way that, Jenny, I believe that you said that that's how the select board, correct? Yes, I did. We were, we're going to endorse the net zero action plan, which is said somewhere else, but I don't think we're automatically endorsing the zoning recommend, recommendation. Maybe review and make a decision on. Review and consider. Review and consider, review and consider. Because later on it has the, um, in one of the others. You know, so maybe review, review and endorse net zero action plan and consider zoning recommendations. Well, but the net, we have that below the net zero action plan in one of the others. Sorry, I'm I'm trying to read on the screen. I apologize. So I think it's a it could say review and consider connect Arlington zoning recommendations. Because if you look at number two, Rachel, there's the first action is adopt based on connect yep. Arlington. So they're down there. So, okay, those, those, that's better. I don't want to wordsmith this to death. Sorry. I think, I think it's, uh, you know, we're reviewing a plan. There's many components to the plan. I put this section under zoning. The second one is long range planning. So it's actually an amendment to the master plan. Right. Uh, connect Arlington. And then of course there's zoning recommendations, which some may or may not be proposed by the board. That was my only comment. Great. Thank you, Jean. Uh, Melissa, any comments? Um, I think I was just curious. I, have, I, I guess I recall under the urban renewal plans, it said transitioning the management of the ARB. I thought we were going to kind of go over and understand our powers before we considered a transition like that. Yeah, I tried to rework it so it was a little, so it was just about the management of them, but not a full transfer of uh, the property. Okay. Um, this was actually, I think Jean made that comment as well. Okay. Um, and I think this was what Jean, you may have suggested did I? So is that, is that still, um, are you, you don't? Transitioning management, yeah. Management, daily unit operations, yeah. I mean, so I was just thinking of that in ter terms of what we talked about, but that makes sense. Okay. Great, thanks, Melissa. Steve, any questions? Uh, looks fine to me. Great, thank you. All right. Um, sorry, give me one second. So I don't think, Jenny, do we need to vote to formally adopt these? I don't think that I we just, do. You just vote to approve okay. as amended. All right. So uh, is there a motion to approve as amended the uh, updated fiscal year 2022 ARB goals? So motion. Is there a second? I can't. All right, uh, we'll take a vote. Ken? Yes. Ken? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So that closes agenda item number three. Now we'll move to agenda item number four, which is the zoning warrant article filing process and coordination with the redevelopment board. And Jenny, you have uh, for our reference the filing process, which um, I believe Aaron had put together for us for um, the 2021 um, period. So we were going to make a point this evening to um, let everybody know who is considering a zoning warrant article um, uh, proposal who would like to uh, work together with the ARB to to start doing so sooner rather than later uh, so that we can work towards the January filing in the months of October, November, and December 
to be able to start uh, giving members of the public feedback on any, uh, any articles that may be under consideration. And Jenny, um, I'll turn it over to you for any specific items that you wanted to cover um, with regard to um, the taking the framework that we came up with from 2021 and moving it forward to 2022. Thank you. Um, well, I think there's a couple of things. One is I think it would be helpful if the board could decide when you wanna start those conversations. You know, it could be early, but if you're meeting only once in October, do you want to spend time in no at no November or December meetings talking with uh, potential petitioners because January is when warrant articles are due. Um, so we can, I'm just thinking of ways that we can update this framework, post it and um, also advertise it to town meeting members. Um, and uh, uh, Kelly worked with Aaron on this, so we'll, we'll will also do the same again. Um, but I, I was mostly looking to just understand sort of the beginning part, if you would like people to come, if we know, um, you know, I don't know by the way, but if there are people who would want to talk with the board um, to have them come in November and December, and then we'll provide an updated process so it's clear how that process works. Because um, right now, obviously it's talking about the past. Right, Jean. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think we need to put on the beginning of this, the sort of public consultation process. And I'd say October isn't too early to say if people have some ideas about what they want to file or they have more than ideas, they have some more specific things that they should be emailing them during October and to mid-November, and we will start looking at them and having them come to meetings to discuss that. So I don't. I think we need to start that. You know, October's not far away. And maybe that needs to be the, be, you know, the beginning of this rather than the January date. Yeah. Yeah, we would, we would update that timeline to have sort of a, a little bit of a beginning part I don't think that that's reflected currently. Or well, maybe it would be like starting October, mm -hmm. public consultation um, suggestions for warrant articles. Yeah, exactly. Making it clear it's not required, of course, right. under the warrant article filing process, but that it would be recommended. And then it is open to anyone who chooses Anybody. to take advantage of it. I think that was something we made sure to clarify during the Q&A. Um, on several of the warrant articles that were proposed by um, residents last during the last uh, during the 2021 season. Jean, any other comments? Ken? No. Uh, Melissa? No. Steve? Um, only to say that uh, as soon as we can get people, you know, in to talk to us, I think we should talk to them. <laughs> Sooner is better and you know, more opportunity for iteration is a good thing. Agreed. Great, well, thank you for doing this. And uh, Kelly, thank you for your work um, with Aaron and putting this together last year. I think it was really, and for Barbara Thornton who actually su suggested it, I, I think it was, um, it, it helped demystify the process quite a bit. So thank you very much. You're welcome, it helped me too, so thank you. <laughs> Great. All right. Thank you very much. Um, and we will move to our next item, which is uh, the meeting minutes. And we start with the meeting minutes from uh, August 30th, 2021. And I will uh, roll through to see if there are any uh, corrections or amendments to the meeting minutes, starting with Jean. Uh, yeah, I'm just pulling them up on my screen. I have quite a few okay. um, for August 30th. In the second paragraph, um, the one, two, three, four, five, the sixth line that said, Mr. Benson asked about the disparity between the stated sign size between, it should say the stated sign, sign, stated sign size on the application forms 
rather than between. Should be the disparity between the stated sign on the application forms in the memo. Later in that paragraph, the last sentence, Ms. Rate confirmed that the sign is still non-conforming due to the height and delete and area, because it was only a height issue. Right. Uh, later on that page, um, the, the next one, the paragraph that starts with Mr. Lau said, the last sentence says, Mr. Benson said he would like the sign limited, sign size limited as a condition of the permit. Since there is a size discrepancy, it should not say on the application. It should say between the application and the actual sign size as explained by Ms. Ray. I'm scrolling to see what else I had on here. Um, on the third page, the long first paragraph, um, there's one sentence that says, Ms. Wright reminded the board of the full list of criteria for denying a permit. That use alone is not enough to deny a permit. I have a couple other sentences. Um, Mr. Benson stated his belief that the board could deny a permit application based on the criteria in 3.3.3, as well as on the criteria in 3.4.3. Um, Ms. Rate and the board agreed that the town council would be asked for his opinion. And then the rest of the paragraph. Sorry, can you repeat after 3.4? Ms. Ray and the board agreed that town council would be asked for his opinion. On then on the very top of page four, uh, where it says, Mr. Benson said he would like to see a proposal that keeps the original facade. There should be another sentence that said, Mr. Noyes said he and his client would consider that, as we found out tonight. Do you see that, Jenny? Um, wait, am I adding? Yes, Did another you... sentence. So after the word facade, yep. it would be Mr. Noyes said he and his client would consider that. So it's Mr. Anethi. That's Anethi, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then down near the bottom, it says the chair introduced the second agenda item, our, our committee appointments for our committee members and designees. The second sentence says the chair suggested meeting the standing committee. Mem nominee should probably be envision Arlington standing committee nominee. And then later in that, sentence. After the word present, there should be a semicolon rather than a comma. And then it says appointment introductions, delete the word introductions. Uh, sorry, I don't know where you're talking about oh, for says, present. Um, present semicolon, the other appointments will be rescheduled. Get rid of the word introduction and make it appointments. Because they weren't introductions, they're just yeah. Opinions. Okay. Then the next sentence, I don't think he said it was a pleasure to represent Envision Arlington. I think he said something like, "Pleasure to represent the ARB on Envision Arlington." And those are my suggested changes to those minutes. Great, thank you, Jean. Ken? I'm all set. Great. Uh, Melissa? No comment. And Steve, I don't believe that you were at this meeting with us. I will abstain. Okay. 
Um, so the only item I have is actually not related to this, but actually to the list of um, uh, uh, committee representatives and the um, gentleman who we approved in this meeting. Should he be listed on Envision Arlington on that list together with um, Alice, Alex Bagnall for Envision Arlington? So he's actually my designee, but you okay. approve my appointment. Fabulous. Great. Thanks for the clarification. <laughs> That's that is the structure that the town created. Fabulous. OK, uh, so uh, is there a motion to approve these meeting minutes as amended for August 30th? So moved. Second. 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 Great, we'll take a vote. Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. I have a yes as well. And Steve, you are an abstain. That is correct. Correct. So we, we, we uh, have approved the meeting minutes from August 30th, 2021. Uh, the next item on our agenda are the meeting minutes from September 11th, 2021. And while Jenny pulls those up, Jean, I'll start with you. Thank you. I do have some suggestions. So what was interesting about this one is all and all the other ones were like Mr. Benson, Ms. Rape. They dropped all of those. This is Rape, Welcome, Drevel. I know. I so. took these minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I had no video and I was talking most of the time. <laughs> so I mean, if you don't want to put the Mr. and Ms. and stuff, Maybe at least said great welcome Steve Revelack, at least the first time. Um, in the second paragraph, the third sentence where it says other suggestions included amending the parking requirements for residential uses, it should say multifamily residential uses. Um, is that in this, this paragraph, the second one? Yeah, the one that says starts with Lao introduced. The third line, other suggestions included amending the parking requirements for residential uses. It was multifamily residential okay. uses. In the next paragraph, um, I'm not sure about this, where it says about the fifth line down, this zoning work may occur because of the MBTA communities. I thought maybe this vote zoning work may occur along with the MBTA communities planning work. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. So get rid of not because of, replace with along with. Um, the next line down after the word gardens, it should be from, not form. Do you see that? However, municipalities across the state are awaiting guidance from the MBTA, the minutes say form. Oh, yeah. And then the last word, the last word where it says on that paragraph where it says elevate basements, it's not basements they're elevating, they're elevating. Yeah. The <laughs> um, it was uh, it was the base flood zone. Is that what you were talking about, well, Steve? But, but they weren't elevating the basements. They are elevating the first floor above the base flood level. Yes, basically. So just. Elevate well, first floors, okay. Yeah. Well, I would say elevate building. Building, yeah, I, okay. Because there's there there are different ways to go about it, but yeah, yeah building is good. Okay, so those are my comments on that. A lot of buildings happening in this one sentence. I'll figure that out. <laughs> Regarding addressing buildings and floodplains by allowing taller buildings by elevating to, I'll figure it out. <laughs> So the the idea is that basically you can you can consider base flood elevation in height. <laughs> so if the flood elevation is five feet above the ground, well, you should be able you. It would be nice to have the ability to raise the structure up five feet. Is that okay? Uh... I consider base flood. 
let's say by considering base flood elevation in the calculation of building height. Okay. Thank you. They do that in other flood zones uh, and other parts of the state too. Yeah. Great. Is that all, Gene? That was it. Okay. Ken? I'm good. Steve? Uh, looks fine to me. Great. Melissa? You're good? All right. Fine. Is there a motion to approve the September 11th, 2021 meeting minutes as amended? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Take a vote. Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I am a yes as well. So the meeting minutes for September 11th, 2021 are approved. That closes agenda item number five. We move to agenda item number six, which is open forum. So we will invite uh, any member of the public with us this evening who uh, wishes to address the board to please use the raise hand function. All right, uh, so any member wishing to address the board, uh, please note that you will have up to three minutes. Please address, uh, begin your remarks by introducing yourself with your first, last name, and address. And we will start with Don Seltzer. Thank you, Don Seltzer, Irving Street. Uh, I'd like to return to something that Jean brought up earlier about the Atwood House. Uh, Jean had discovered that the original special permit from 2009, which allowed the development of the CVS and everything, had specifically set aside a good chunk of land in the rear of the Atwood House for the purpose of a possible future development. And uh, while the meeting has been going on, I brought up the plot plan for it. And it's a, it's a nice piece of land. It's, it looks like to be about 7,000 square feet at least. And Right now, it's about 70 feet from the rear of the Atwood House to where the uh, drive-up lane for CVS is. So uh, just throwing out as an idea, one option for redeveloping the house is keep it where it is, keep the front and uh, side facades, which the Historical Commission want, keep the nice front lawn, which flows into the First Baptist Church lawn, and build backwards. You can more than double the footprint of the existing house and still have 20 feet of lawn as a buffer before you get to the turn around, the drive up lanes for CVS. Um, this seems to be a perfectly reasonable approach to take that would probably keep everybody happy. Great. Thank you very much. Certainly. And thanks for Jean for looking into what the special permit um, has as its basic components. Great. Well, I could convince you, but I can't convince the owner of the building apparently. That is the big point. Yeah, that's the <laughs> tough one. <laughs> All right. Uh, are there any other members of the public who wish to address the board this evening? All right, seeing none, we will close public forum, open forum rather. Uh, are there any other items from the board before we, any other new business before we move to adjourn? Jean? Ken? Steve? Nope. Melissa? No. Nope. All right, uh, Jenny, any, anything else that we didn't cover? No, um, but I will be in touch with the board regarding the next meeting and whether or not it will happen on the 4th. If I can have Doug attend, of course, that will be the main agenda item. If not, then I would suggest that we cancel the meeting. I don't have other items at this time, um, but I will also encourage you to attend a couple of forums that are coming up. <clears throat> There's many other things you can attend. So um, I'll put that into a follow-up email. Great, thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome. All right, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? A motion. Is there a second? Second. All right, uh, we'll take a roll call vote, Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Steve? Yes. 
And I am a yes as well. Thank you all. Night, have a wonderful evening. Thank you all. Thank Good night. you. Good night. Good night. Good night.